Akistat's Video Productions presents from the Roseland Ballroom in New York City, the U.S. Open Straight Pool Championships. Along with us today is uh, one of the most knowledgeable players in the world, and I might add, the most recent inductee into the Hall of Fame, Dallas West. Dallas, it's really a pleasure having you with us today, and I think we're going to have a really a great match upcoming with Mike Siegel and a young John Schmidt, who just recently qualified in California to play in this prestigious event. I agree with you. I'm looking forward to watching this match and seeing Mike come back, and it's nice to be here with you too, Billy, because... Uh, I don't get a chance to do this very often, so I enjoy this. Well, you, we, we did do some commentary in Portland, Maine, for that straight pool event, and I was really impressed with your, you know, your ability to, to you know, describe on the table what was happening, and that's what you need to do, and that's what you do so well. And uh, once again, it's really a pleasure having you here. Thank you. And now Mike Siegel, as we all know, has been away from the game for the best part of five years, Gentlemen, and we're all anxious to see how well he plays in this event. Yeah, I think he'll do well. And to hear him speak, I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him run 150 and out because he's been <clears throat> bragging a little bit Mr. that he's been playing Siegel quite well. Opening, opening lag. Well, Mr. you know, yeah, when you haven't been playing for a while, it depends on what your opponent thinks of you for being away for a while, too. He, he might open the door and get a little loose on you, and it'll tighten you up a little bit. So we'll see. Yeah, that does usually happen to a lot of people, but uh, Mike Siegel it happens less often, too, because he does have that uncanny ability. He's so resilient, and he can concentrate, and he has such great skills he's developed throughout the years. And what a shot maker he is. I mean, I don't think there's a ball on the table that he can't pocket. At least that's that's what I've witnessed all these years. I mean, he, he really has continued to surprise me with some of the some of the really most difficult shots that he's been able to pocket. I mean, he's one of the best ball pocketers of all time. Uh, there's no doubt about that. He's a tremendous shot maker and, a, and just a tremendous all-around player, actually. And in straight pull, Dallas, it's so important to jump out of the gate quickly. And uh, Mike Siegel's going to have that opportunity in just a second because he's walking to the table, and this will be actually his first shot in this country in a tournament in the past five years. Now, this guy's so smart here. I mean, when I analyze what he's got to open up with right here, uh, that 15, uh, you go for that 15, you know, that's a pretty tough shot. And uh, to, to get started out, I think you'll go for the five and just try to pocket the ball and get on maybe the six or something here. We'll see. Yeah, not that the five is an easy shot. It really, by no means, is it an easy shot. Maybe a little more, less difficult to pocket than the 15, but nevertheless. Yeah, plus it ain't going to open up the balls right away when he's taking the chance on the shot. Oh, he oh, fired it. Such a great shot, man. Oh. You know, right out of the chair, if pocketing could, a ball like if that. If I could hit it like that, Billy, I'd have shot to 15. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, he certainly has passed the test in regard to is he prepared to pocket balls. He certainly has passed the test there. He certainly has the accuracy that he left with. And... Uh, Let's see how well he handles the rest of the match. Unfortunately, after pocketing a ball to carry that, that, that the type of difficulty, he didn't come up with a shot. You know. Is he going to bank this eight? Would you bank this or play safe on this? You know, it depends on what kind of a mood I was in. <laughs> yeah, that's the right shot. But he didn't. He hit it too hard. And give him a shot in the 15 ball. Okay, it doesn't appear that he's really done what he, what he wanted to do. He has given up some sort of a shot. I do believe the side pocket is available for this shot. Not a wide opening, but uh, does have a pocket and struck it very cleanly. John Smith found a way here by winning a qualifier in Los Angeles. So you really can't discount him because if you can win a qualifier anywhere, you know that uh, you're dangerous. Uh -oh. there's, a, there's when you take a chance and not using the bridge. And... When okay. you're playing a guy like Mike Siegel, you're going to want to take those kind of chances. You want to that first rack. You really want to watch what you're doing and use the bridge or use whatever you have to use there. I think Schmidt should have taken an intentional scratch before he opted to play a safe on that particular shot. 
which would have given him a benefit or an advantage maybe a little later in the, in the game. Now Siegel's at the table. Safety. Playing a safe. Hey, give him a shout in the one. Safety's allowed. You know, Mike always had that characteristic of jumping a little bit after contacting the cue ball, which isn't bad, by the way. And I noticed that the first two shots he's shot here in this one match, ball. he's jumped a little bit, so therefore that's still with him. That's that's because he's been away for a while, and it'll take a few of those jumps to start getting smooth. Wow. And, and if the young man hits one. very many of them straight like that, he, he might jump a few more times. <laughs> yes, he might. I tell you what, took a lot of courage to shoot at that particular shot with the speed that he shot it with, wouldn't you say? <laughs> very, a lot of courage. <laughs> What in the world is he doing eight here? He's shooting at eight ball. Well, uh, he certainly has come out of the gate prepared to shoot. Holy Toledo. Well, what do we have here? Certainly uh, Two ball. throwing caution to the wind here. Not showing totally disrespect for Mike Siegel, Three. but obviously this is the style that he likes to play. So uh, this this figures to be a very interesting. Well, sometimes contest. when a player tries to play a couple of safeties on you and, and he messes them up a little bit and gives you a couple of shots, you, it builds your confidence up a little bit. But I don't think it's set in exactly who he's playing yet. <laughs> maybe in a while it will, and maybe it won't. You know, it's good to have this type of a style when you're playing an upper echelon player because you send a message to that man. You say, listen, you're just another player. I'm, a, I'm not going to change my style for you. I'm going to shoot for the pocket. And quite frankly, sometimes it works out quite well when you shoot for the pocket. I agree with you. If you're going to go down, you're better down off going shooting. down swinging. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like he's going to try to probably use that nine ball, work his way around. He's got to go like two rails there and a 13, I would say, and maybe try to get that 14 out of there. He's got a nice angle on the four to, to eliminate the 14 now, playing position for the 14, then dropping for the 13, then the 10, you know? Yeah, I think he wanted to do this so he can use that four for the, he'll probably go 14, 10, four here. Or he might go 14, four, 10. Mm -hmm. He swung pretty fast down there. Yeah, it looks like he's... Uh, he got away with it, though. He's shooting a, a little precipitously, a little quicker than he should be. He's not really taking much time out there. Precipitously? Yeah. Billy, was, you're getting like Grady Matthews. Yeah, I wish he wouldn't have said that. I'm not going to use that word anymore. Thank you. Look at this shot. Oh, my Lord, he don't take nothing. He played a three-reel billiard. Well, this now, I wouldn't have shot it that way, but, you know, <laughs> I would have hit it with a little low right and tried to come underneath at one rail, or even, right. up at, even up at top wouldn't hurt anything. Absolutely. That way, having much better control and of the speed of the speed shots. and everything, yeah. yeah. Yes, and that's, that's, that's probably what he needed to, to concentrate on in that particular shot was the speed. But nevertheless, he does have some sort of a uh, break shot on the nine. You know, I have to give some of these players. I, I learned, I learned uh, something occasionally. I like to learn something a little bit about the game every day if I can. And the one thing that, I, that they do better than myself is that when they come out of the shoot, some of these players, they come out firing. And they try to get that tightness out of their game so they can get that looseness into the game. And, and that's where I'm a little bit weak because I don't play a lot. But you're, and that's what I would like to do is to come out and fire balls a little bit more. Sometimes like it's hard to pull the trigger. Don't. That's right. You that's know. what I mean. Because sometimes you have so much knowledge that it's hard to pull the trigger and do something against the odds. Yeah. You know, against what you really believe in. Get away from the proper thing. That's exactly right. But it would be, it would be really, you know, good if we could force ourselves to do that occasionally, mm -hmm. because most certainly it would loosen us up quicker. I agree. But it's not worth the trade-off when you're playing certain people, because you don't want to give certain people extra opportunities. And Mike Siegel is one of those people. Six ball. I think he's going to try to go three reels and break these. But if he hits this too hard, 
He'll lose it. He's got to hit this with a real nice stroke. Do you think the shot that he has on the two lends to the angle that'll give him the length that he needs on the well, third That's cushion? what I mean. He's got to hit it real nice speed and spin, and he can't hit this real hard. He's got to hit this medium. And that's a very good point that, uh, that Dallas brought up, is that if you hit this too hard, you're going to come off the third cushion shorter than you would if you would hit it softer. You would lengthen off the third cushion. It looks like he's... He's playing uh, safe, I think, or is he? Well, he ended up playing Fourteen. safe, but this no, time he's he playing played. something. He has something in mind. I don't know if he's looking at that five ball or what are you looking at? Five ball. I think it's going to hit to the right side yeah, of the pocket. Yeah, me too. It looks like it's going to go low. Oh, wow. He got interference. It was going. He got interference. Well, in the fashion that he shot that particular shot, it didn't look like to me there was much of a chance for it to go because he was going to send a lot of balls rolling faster than the five. Now, here they're forgetting to spot the five ball up. They did not spot the five up. It no. went in the right-hand corner. And I think that's... Uh, now, Michael, the critter did the ball or the other guy well. Well, that's interesting because we'll find out what happens now. I don't know. I don't think it's our our job to uh, no, but to point that out. Two. Well, let me ask you something. Notice the position of the eight and the thirteen. I don't want to get too far ahead in this particular rack, but the way I see this rack run is that he'll eliminate the fourteen and the seven. That's right. He's okay. got to clear out the seven. Right. And then he'll eventually shoot the 15 and the 11. Well, he should have cleared out the seven He there. surprised me there, but maybe he's going to leave the three. He might go 13, eight, I seven. I thought about shooting, clearing the seven, shooting a 15, 11, and then shooting the eight, bumping the 13 over. I think he's going to go 13, 8, 7, 11, 15, 4. We'll see what he does. I was going to manufacture a break shot. Right, and I agree with you. Yeah, and, and maybe sometimes when you're in the manufacturing business, things don't work out well. Maybe I try to manufacture too many things, and that's why. Oh, well, I, I do. That's my undoing, I think. Uh -oh. let's, let's watch one of the greatest technicians sure. of our time and see what he does. And Dallas said that he's going to shoot the 8, the 7, uh, the 11, 15, and 4. He could double cross me and save the seven, but he's not gonna. He could have went maybe seven, fifteen, four, eleven, eleven seven, three, and then come underneath mm -hmm. it. But which is another very a viable option, but uh, not this time. But of course, that was seven ball. Definitely a consideration. Seven. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, it looks like he has the wrong angle on the 15. He would have liked to have the angle on the 15 to draw the ball back near that foot spot somewhere, shooting 11 and going up table for the four. But that's not the angle that he has on the 15. So therefore, he's going to have to yeah, he's revise got, he's his really plan. to go this way. This is the way at the beginning where I would have went verbatim. Okay, now he's ended up ideally for the 15. After pocketing the 15, it'll carry the natural angle down the table for the four. Nine. And he may end up a little too flat on the four. No, no, he's it looks perfect. Like he's okay. He can come right over there, and that, right where his hand's at, right on the right. third diamond. If, yeah. He would like to hit the cushion before the side pocket, coming away from the cushion about two or three inches. And watch out. Ten. Not quite enough off that side cushion, but nevertheless, he does have a nice angle to open up the balls. The shot may be a little more difficult than one he would have been one to end up with, but let's see how he, how he does with it. Well, one thing about the shot, he can make a bridge off the rail nice. If, if he, he gets in limbo, if he gets at a certain position where he can't make that bridge, maybe another inch wouldn't have let him make that bridge nice. But then two inches would have made a nice bridge. So I think he's okay the way he lays right there. The only thing of it is, on a break shot like this, a guy has a tendency of hitting this with a little more cinchiness than to try to hit it with a uh, maybe a little draw and come off the stack to make sure you don't get stuck to the stack or something. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think that for a left-handed player, this shot plays a little more 
you know, he should be a little more comfortable being a left-handed player shooting this shot. I think a right-handed player would have a little more difficulty in pocketing and controlling the cue ball on this particular shot. Yeah, I've had, I have a lot of uh, uh, students in that they're right-handed players that will ask me if it makes any difference on one side of the table or another. And I usually tell them what you say there. I usually prefer, the right-hander usually prefers the left side and the left-hander usually preserves the right side. There he is. Now, don't you miss this? I mean, really, you miss this. I mean, who other than Mike Sigel talks to all the spectators, <laughs> motions? He really, this yeah. is what relaxes him. Yeah. You know, I mean, he does this because it relaxes him. He's not fooling anyone, you know. He, okay. <laughs> Mr. Siegel's on a run of 10, shooting the three. The score He's is not that Mr. congenial. Smith, 16, Mr. He Siegel doesn't 11. get along with everyone. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. He does. He's really a great person. I really miss him being uh, not being on the tour. But you're dead right. Uh, sometimes uh, we all have a tendency of getting a little bit too tight when we're playing, and uh, it's an art like anything else. Some of these guys know how to lay it down. Mike's real good at it. Earl Strickland's real good at it, and it gets them loose. It gets them coming a little bit. Wimpy used to be great at it, Lassiter. He, yeah. he, <laughs> there we go. Not an easy shot. That's right. That's what we thought on the five. Uh -huh. Not an easy shot. Hitting no, it, no. Hitting it a little too thick, not really hitting it accurately enough to pocket the ball. Really unhappy with the results. And he wanted to hit it. He didn't want to baby it. 13 ball. One. He wanted badly to jump out of the gate and make a nice impression, you know, like, hey, listen, I'm back. Yeah. You know, that was important to him. At least it should have been, and I'm sure it was. And I really do believe he is back, maybe a little tight from the offset, but I think before this match is over, he's certainly going to make his presence felt. No doubt about it. I don't know how. Uh, See, now he's leaving the six ball here, and he's got the two there. The problem with doing stuff like this, the guys don't under, I mean, I call it uncovering the pockets. they got to learn how a lot of these young players, they'll leave the balls a little bit too long, and you got to uncover those pockets. Yeah, that was extremely noteworthy, the point that Dallas just brought up. It's so important to free up other balls by eliminating problem balls in front of the pocket that other balls will, will need, to, they need to go by. So, so therefore, if he would have shot the six, that opens up the pocket for the 15 and the eight. And, uh, you know, it really, really simplifies things quite a bit. And when you don't recognize, you know, options like that, then uh, you just take the worst of it and you have a harder time running balls. But of course, there's other ways to remedy sure that. Sure but, uh, but, but there's, there's a the hard right way, way and an easy yeah, way. Yeah, but there's the right way and the not right way and right. the easy way. And there's, there's not saying that we can't you know, solve the problem by shoot, shooting the lower percentage, but it's just more difficult to do that consistently. Six. Dallas West is one of the best teachers of this game in the planet, or on the planet, I should say. And right, right away, bringing up a very noteworthy point. Well, one of the things I like to do uh, uh, with students, Billy, is that I like to take and try to get them involved in straight pull for the simple reason is, they're dealing with the whole rack. They have to move around the balls, and uh, they learn a little bit more ball control, I think. Even though in the infancy of the game, they will find that they have more choices. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's easier. It just gives them a little bit more latitude for their choices in the beginning. But as they progress in the game, they find out the difficult factor of of uh, how tough it is really that all the patterns you have to learn and how it is to run balls. And uh, actually, when you're playing straight pull, you force yourself to think. You know, when you're playing nine ball, the balls more or less do the thinking for mm -hmm. you. But playing straight pull, you can get creative and think away out of mm -hmm. a situation. And that's always good to train yourself to do that because you can utilize that way of thinking playing every game. So therefore, you really improve your chances of doing well by, you know, by building a good foundation in straight pool first. Now see what he's going to do here. See, now I'll shoot that five, slide over and get to 10, freeing up that 15 where he could come around or do something. He's going to shoot the nine. 
Now he's gonna have a he's gonna have to shoot to ten, but he has no way of getting back to the fifteen or the four. Mm -hmm. So I mean, just like you said a few minutes ago, there's other ways of doing it, and he can still he can still get there this way. It looks like the fifteen passes into the corner pocket. Yeah, but now but, he's gonna hit a right. break shot. Exactly. So therefore, there wasn't a guarantee that he was gonna get the right angle to shoot that fifteen pass to four right. and fit ten into the corner pocket, and still re be able to retain his his position in terms of breaking the balls. Now he's gonna have to do something. Oh, and, he could choke that. He choked that very nicely. He, he can do this either way. He can either go to the rail or he can draw this up too. But he went to the rail. But nevertheless, your your way was the proper way of handling that situation. He did it his way, a little more difficult, but nevertheless, got the job done. There are different ways of doing it. I don't think we're going to see him hit this break shot too softly, so. No. I think he's going <laughs> to he's going to open him up, no question about it. And we just watch the. Uh, you know, I, I think uh, I think Pat Fleming is uh, kind of winning me over on how to hit some of these, if you know what I mean. Oh, really? Yeah, he likes to warp these and go to the end rail. <laughs> That's not a bad shot. We just watch uh, Instead of just hitting it soft and winding up on him. Yeah, see here, like he hit that and wind up, although he's okay. But another foot he wouldn't have been. Yeah. We just watched Jose Garcia play his match on the Big feature four. table. What a contradiction. In a, in a contrast in style compared to the young man we see playing right now, John Schmidt. Now, Garcia breaks the ball softly. He has totally total control of the cue ball. I mean, it's really a pleasure to watch him play. Oh, he's a very good player. Oh, he's an excellent player. But a guy like Schmidt can be very dangerous. If the balls cooperate for a player like Schmidt with his style, he can run run a hundred balls quicker than, you know, quicker than maybe as quick as Lubitera. Because he's going to be a dangerous player, but uh, not a consistent player, but a dangerous player. But he's young yet, and this is a learning process that he's going through right now. He's got the opportunity to play possibly the best straight pool player in the last 30, 40 years within Mike Siegel. Uh, would you agree with that? I agree. Assessment? Oh, I agree. Mike's is, is uh, out of our era. He's as fine as uh, definitely in the top five players that ever played. And John Schmidt, a relatively See, newcomer. Now here, now here he can bump to his 10 without taking a chance. He's got the 15 over there. He can do a little manufacturing here like that. Mm -hmm. Very nice. All right. He's on no, he's, 22. But he's got to be careful in here because now, oh, I see what he'll do here. He'll go 15, 9, 3, 14, 13, 5. Let's see what he does. Oh, right let's away. See he, let's see if he, oh, he's, that's, that first shot is so delicate on how you hit that ball. Yeah, well, he bypassed his mark a little bit. He's lost his market somewhat, but uh, he, he can. He won't do it that way now. No. He might try to slide between the 3 and 10 and come down on the 14 or else. No, he's going to stay above the 10, I guess. But I'd try to slide between the 3 and 10, take the 14, 13, go up for the right. 3 and then the 5. But the way you had originally described it was so clear. It was easy. I just laid there like a painting. Very clear. That's what I love about straight pull. You can you can uh, play the game and uh, and if things are going right for you and you're playing right, you can, you can play the game like it's... Uh, it's just uh, a picture full, you know. Now he's still all right, but he's got to shoot the 14 in the same pocket unless he goes one rail and draws it over and back. No. He didn't look at that. He tried to steer that in the hole is what he tried to do. Well, yeah, well, what he did actually was he used a stroke he was totally uncomfortable with, and that was a finesse stroke. You know he's not a finesse player. So therefore, when he opts to use that finesse stroke, he's going to lose a little accuracy because he's not really comfortable shooting in that fashion, and that's exactly what happened. There. Very well put. One. Mike Siegel, on the other hand, he's quite adept at using any type of a stroke because... You don't let this guy to the table <laughs> with, with a layout like this. It can cost you dearly. 
Because even if he's rusty, he'll get the ring rust off quick with this stuff. You know, it looks like he's falling a little awkward on the angle on the five for the five here. It looks like he's going to have to uh, manufacture he'll if you go will, down something he'll, here. He'll go down the end rail and come off. Five ball. A little inside right, not much, just a little. I don't know if he can. I, I don't know if he can bring it back off that bottom cushion in the right direction, considering the angle that he has. He may have to go to the side rail here. Now he looks okay. Let's see what happens. He hit it hard, though. Yeah. Wow, what a shot. I'm like, talking about a now, see, Mike, now textbook Mike. shot from the position he was in to end up where he did. That's incredible. Yeah. And even though he didn't really stroke that ball nice, he kind of, you know that funny stroke punched I'm talking about? He yeah, he kind of slugged it a little bit and got there. Which even makes that shot play more, even more difficult considering yeah. how the stroke he used to yeah. shoot that particular shot. And he was able to control that that particular shot. That's with a hard, yeah. It's almost like a, a stun type uh, foul. He'll, be, he'll cut this enough. Yep. 11 ball. 11 in the side. Notice very quickly the two balls on the foot end of the table, the six and the 15. No, he'll shoot the two. He won't shoot that 11 over that eight, I don't think. No. Look at the six and the 15 laying right here. Mm -hmm. Problem he's gonna have to deal with, you know, later on in the rack. But of course, that's gonna be some time before he gets to that. He's gonna try to figure out what ball he needs Unless to utilize six to go. Up the balls. Yeah. I don't think the six will go. Oh, okay. If you notice on the monitor, the distance the distance from the 15 to the cushion is much greater than the distance from the six to the cushion. Billy, you got me. I'm gonna pull my glasses out now. <laughs> well, you know you're not allowed to put the glasses on when we play. <laughs> see if I can see this telestrator better with this. You know, you have hey, a pen Hey, you know what, here. that's not bad. Yeah, you I have see. a pen here to use on the telestrator winner, but this little light right here has to be on, and in order to get this light on, you have to push this light. Okay. Yeah, see, and that light, or else you can talk, and they'll, they'll uh, maybe pay attention to you if you're a good player. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a pleasure working with you, Billy. You take away them frailties that I have. <laughs> Okay, what does he have here, Dallas? Well, I think he's going to probably have to shoot that 11 in the corner unless that 9's dead. He might have that 9. Mm -hmm. He's looking at it now. The 14 and 9 are about an inch apart from one another. Then he can break the 6 up, too, if it lays like that. He's going to use the 7 to go into the 14 and shoot the 9. And he tried to hit the 6, but he missed everything. He's kind of uh, unhappy with, uh, with the way he executed that shot. Now he's going to have to revise his plan and go a different route. He's looking at the 112 combination. Mike Siegel has the ability and the skills to pocket combinations very accurately. I've noticed that about him in the past, that uh, he shoots combinations so accurately. Another testament to his ability to pocket balls. Well, the great players uh, that I can think of in the past, uh, when you talk about the ability of pocketing balls, they really know how to use that pocket all around. And uh, for young players playing the game, if we're trying to play position and stuff like that, they have to learn that. They have to not just pocket the ball, but they have to pocket the ball certain ways. Like he hit that one with a nice stun stroke. He might have the seven, or he might have the, the what you said, the combination on the 12. But he may have nothing at all. Oh, he's got something. <laughs> well, the six may be, may be available. Uh, the ball, I said, wouldn't go. He's shooting know? at the 14, eh? Oh, that was the ball I said wouldn't go, remember? And I said it was dead. Oh, come on. Wow, you're going to start this again. <laughs> <laughs> Am I getting bad? Oh, my. <laughs> now he's going to come back for the seven or the or the four on the side, or he's got a lot of options when he comes back here a little bit. Sure, he can shoot the seven or hit those balls. It's like nah, Mike's not there yet. He's looking at the thirteen on the side. He maybe he might not like the angle that he has on the seven. 
Yeah, because he's going to feed off of the 14 and, and then go above it a little bit and then shoot the 13 in this corner over here. Let's see what happens. It all depends on how his billiard is. He don't like it right now. I know. It. I, I didn't think he would. I can maybe perhaps shoot the 12. I don't know if the 12 will go. The 12 goes in the other pocket. Okay. Once he clears the 7 from the table, it'll open up the pocket mm -hmm. the lower right-hand corner. You know, he can shoot the 7 and even shoot the 8 in the side after he shoots the 7, dropping for the 12. He might even go 1, shoot the 7, bump the 14 now, being a lefty. But he probably didn't think of that then, but he might think of it right now. Let's see what he does. Seems to me that he's always really unhappy with the results, even though they're not that bad. He always shakes his head like he's done something yeah. wrong, and, and then you see him run 100 and out. Yeah, I know. You know? Uh, meanwhile, he drives you crazy with that. Well, he certainly does, you know. And if you're betting on him, which I never do anymore, but if you're betting on him and you'll watch him at the table, you always think he's in trouble, and it's enough to give you a heart attack. And he opted to shoot your shot, mm. but evidently he wasn't able to control the cue ball well enough to break break loose to 12 now from the 14. Now he shoot the one and go into them two balls, I believe. Yeah, well, he really didn't do what he intended to do, and, and it's... I'm starting to believe that, uh, you know, he's not really as, as advanced as he thinks he no, is. No, he's a little rusty. Yeah, a little rusty, a little rusty. He's allowed. <laughs> I know, but I'm not going to mention it at all. Yeah. <clears throat> but he, you know what? He never plays like that when he plays me. <laughs> Isn't that something? He's never rusty when no. he plays me. <laughs> <clears throat> now it looks like he'll go eight in the side, 12 in the corner, break off to 14. Yep. One rail. See you at the table, showing us a little bit. Showing us a little, little head, head shake. <laughs> that he's... Uh, <laughs> Two rails. Yep, you know he's, he, he's starting to feel like he wants to play now when he starts backing across the room. So he's getting ready, folks, to come break loose with something. Well, I'll tell you, he's got a good angle. Now all he needs to do is hit it accurately. Yeah. That's all you got. Ball. Now, if this if this shot is struck accurately, there's no question. The cue ball goes into the stack, opens him up nicely too. Let's see the speed in which he hits this, and then and plus it's laying just right off that one six. Yep, there's way right, the speed is what I was wondering about. Okay, once again, he's going to be confronted with a situation that uh, very few people. Would like to be confronted with, and that's that long length of the table shot. And regardless of which shot he chooses to shoot, to the 15 or the five or even the three, it's not going to be easy. The nice thing about the five is it opens up to 12 and the six. You shoot the three, it don't even open up either ball. So I think he has to shoot the five or the 12. That's a good point. If you shoot the five, you got a better chance of coming up with a shot after pocketing the ball. <laughs> If he shoots the three, he's got a problem. If he shoots the 15, he has a problem. So the five looked like the correct shot for more than more than one reason. It's all a matter of speed here. This guy's such a great shot maker. But he doesn't want to pull the trigger on this shot, does he? No. This is one you got to kind of roll a little bit. And it uh, and it takes a lot of talking to yourself to pull the trigger on a, length, a shot the length of this shot when you have to roll it. It's not an easy shot to to force yourself to shoot, let alone, let alone roll it. Well, he jumped up in the air and mm -hmm. he really poorly hit that ball. I think the reason why he chose to shoot the three over the five is that he could see the pocket a little better in relationship with the ball, with his eyes and the five. quite possible. A lot of players, I, I don't really like the five that, that much better than the three there, but the the reward is really what I go after. So I'll take that chance for that reward. Well, once you factor in all the all the you know 
the possibilities and what will happen, and then you have a reason for shooting the five over the three, then I think that you've done a good job because, you know, you're shooting it with confidence that you're shooting the right shot. And once again, uh -huh. a little mm -hmm. too hard. That shot shouldn't be hit that hard. He can't do that with this guy. This guy will wake up. Now he's smiling. Mike's ready to go. Now he says, start out with the 12 here and get where he can reach it good instead of having to reach over to six. And now he's, he's going to shoot to five. But I thought he'd turn out. That 12 looks, got a little more angle than we think. There's three or four different ways you can play this game, but it's nice to have a a set a set of patterns and a way of working about the rack that'll uh, give you something to practice all the time. Otherwise, uh, you're struggling too much, and you've got to learn to find that comfort zone. <clears throat> One ball. So I'd be surprised if he shoots that 10. I think he'd shoot the 15. Oh, there we once again open that tear up a little bit, but a lot of times he'll, when you're right on the ball, and well, while it should come off the eight and the deuce, let's see what happens with this. Yeah, mm hmm. He's worried about coming up in the middle there. He, he didn't want to get underneath the 15 with it, so if I was going to shoot that, I would have liked to hit it with a draw. But that's where we have our differences in how we like to shoot shots. You know, when I talked to Mike uh, a little <clears throat> earlier in the day, and even last night a little bit about how he was playing, and quite fr frankly, he told me that he was playing extremely well. And up to this part uh, juncture of the match, uh, he, he hasn't shown me that he's is playing as well as he said. But I, I do believe he is playing well. Uh, what I think is happening right now is that there's a lot of pressure on him right now because this is the first opportunity he's had to play in our country in the past five years. For people to look and at There's him. a lot of doubting Thomases out there to mm -hmm. say that he's not going to be able to play well again because of his absence from the game, how long he's been absent from the game, okay? And he wants to prove these people wrong. There's a lot. He's putting a lot of pressure on him right now. And at this moment, I don't think he's handling it well. If he goes on to win this match, which he, he really should because he's playing a relatively inexperienced player. Not to say he doesn't have the, the capabilities of defeating Siegel, which he does, but uh, Siegel still should win this match. And if he wins this match, I think then he'll be dangerous. You know, you have to get through that over that first hurdle. Well, that first that first match has always been the toughest match, I think, for most players anyhow in any tournament because you're trying to establish a, a little feel, establish a little bit of something on the equipment. And, and like you say, in Mike's case, he, he feels like he has uh, something to prove and he's trying to pump himself up and, and get out there and do it because there's no doubt in my mind, and I know there's not in yours either, that, that he, well, when he wakes up, they're gonna wish that he didn't because he's just that type of player. Absolutely. You know. And I think this is a this is a, t a tough moment for him right now. Yeah. And, but I think he'll work his way through it, and then it'll, he'll use this as a building block for his for his yeah, matches uh, that he's going to have to play in, in the future. Looks like six balls. The only thing he's got here. Six ball. Well, you got three nine, then you got two break shots. You can go three nine thirteen eleven or three nine eleven thirteen. And what is your preference? Oof. I like I like the thirteen a little better because it's closer to the rack. It gives me a little bit bigger pocket. But uh, that's a very excellent point, by the way. Because here now you can draw right out into the center of the table where you can reach the ball nice. That's another thing to take into consideration is reaching the ball. Mm -hmm. He got just perfect. I don't know if he's got the, the ideal angle, but he does have an angle to open up the balls. I myself prefer to have a little steeper angle on the 13, but of course this is workable, no, no question about it. Uh, I would never turn this down. Mm. The, thing that, the thing about this shot that he has here is that he can really warp it and be confident in making the ball. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why you like this particular ball as yeah. a break ball opposed to the 11, because the 11, you're shooting into a smaller pocket. Correct. And you really can't hit it with the speed that you can hit this shot with. That's right. And these points that Dallas 
is bringing up here, and, and, and you know, and why he prefers this over that. You know, they're 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 tested and thought out, and they're certainly more effective. And uh, for you people out there that are listening to the commentary here, you're certainly at an advantage when a player like Dallas West is willing to share his thoughts with all of us. Well, I appreciate that, Bill, uh, Billy. That's the reason why. Um, uh, straight pull you don't etch anything in stone there's just different ways you can do it but uh, once again I don't like to belabor the point but you can play it a couple different ways and uh, Five ball. but at least what you do is you give people something to think about give them a reason for doing things and let them be creative off of what you give them as right. your input and uh, you know I, and, I, and I'm sure that there's no one that's going to play the game just like you, and you're not going to play the game just like anyone else. No. We all have our own styles, but the information that you're willing to share with us will enable us to play the game more efficiently and more proficiently because they can utilize what you're giving us and incorporate that into their games. But I think that's the difference between the great ones like uh, Willie and Greenleaf and Karras and, and all of those guys. Those guys all had similar pa similar patterns that they all played, and, and not only just the pattern, but the way that they'd take a rack apart. They didn't run into the balls a lot. It was a controlled game. Mm -hmm. And it's so beautiful to watch a player play a game like that, a controlled yeah, game, you know? And, a, and if you can possibly develop the skill to play a game in that fashion, boy, is that, a, is that an advantage. You and I know that that's pretty to watch, but to a lot of people, they find that a little bit boring because they say you're doing it too easy. Yeah, nothing's, any, nothing's exciting, you know? You're not doing anything special. No. You know, I mean, yeah, I can make those. Look at everything is a foot apart. <laughs> but there's another word that's even a, a better word than special, and that's effective. Yeah. If you can do and do things effectively, you know, you can take all the special and do it what you want with it. I want to be effective. Yeah. Just keep I making see. the ball. Yeah, that's right. exactly right. You know, you want to send your opponent to the bank. Yeah. <laughs> 20. Now, see here, what I don't like about shooting the eight first, then he's got to get back at the six unless he's straight in. He'd be better off to shoot the six than the eight, but he's gonna, now he's going to have to come one rail and get on that six. Absolutely. You already have position to get to your key ball. Right. So why shoot another ball where you have to manufacture another route? He's got to watch it a little bit right here. It can get a little funny on him if you don't he's watch it. He's got to use inside English yeah. here. And he, you know, no, he, he brushed the 11. Now, do you come back for the side or do you just come off the rail? I think you just come off the rail. Yeah, it looks like he's got the uh, the angle that he can control the speed of the three. shot. No, he came back for the side. Well, when he's given a choice to shoot a finesse shot or a stroke shot, quite obviously from what I've seen so far, he's going to choose the, the, the stroke shot. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. He has a tendency of wanting to go that way. And anyway. you can't disagree with him because that's just his style of playing. Right. Yeah. But it would be really advisable for him, if at all possible, to develop that feel, that stroke, that finesse feel. Because he'll get on certain equipment that he can't do this with. It'll be a little faster on him, he'll wind up over here on the rail, or it'll be a little slower on him, and he'll wind up six or eight inches short, and then he's got to manufacture something, go two or three rails with it, and that's mm -hmm. tough. And it's a very valid point you brought forth. And another thing is, is that when he does have to use that finesse stroke, at least he'll be familiar enough with it to use it with consistency. Mm -hmm. And that's why I would advise any aspiring player out there to develop that stroke and implement it into their game. Because when there are times when you have to use it, and it's nice to know that you can. Because you know it's there in your arsenal. Well, you see what he's doing right here? Now, if that nine would go, that would be the shot because it uncovers the 10, see? Mm -hmm. But instead, he's going to go 13 and come around, which is another way of doing it. But and he may hit the one and end up uh, stuck to a ball yeah, here. And then he well, hit it hard. Wow. 14, you gotta stretch over to three, you better use the bridge on this one or shoot it left-handed. 
Here we go. He must have heard you. He's going to opt. Well, he's going to opt to shoot it left-handed. And this is another, you know, point that I like to bring forth is that it's so important to learn to shoot with your opposite hand, particularly when you're playing straight pull, when you're playing foul on all balls, because there are times when you run the risk of fouling a ball unless you shoot it with your opposite hand, like he just illustrated. And uh, if you can learn to shoot with your opposite hand, you'll really uh, be able to sustain runs and play much better. Eight ball. 30. Oh, I don't like this. He's going to go into a nest. If I was going to head a head angle on the other one, I'd have went into it, but let's see what happens. He got away with it. He hit it good. Yes, he did. He certainly has the accuracy to be a good player. There's no question about that. But what he really needs is the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, and that doesn't come this easy. This is one of the that most dangerous time. shots there is, is shooting over balls like this. But if you hit it firm like he hit, hit it there, you're okay. But if you hit that shot the slightest bit soft, it, the ball wants to turn on you like cutting across it. You know, I, I, I'll tell you what I like about his game is that he really makes up his mind, you know, right away. He doesn't really think about what he needs to do. And you would say that's a contradiction to the way we should play. But in this instance, I think it's good for him because he's not being intimidated. And he's not allowing the table to defeat him by trying to outthink himself when he's at the table. Right. So therefore, he has a, you know, he has a better chance of, of winning this match because of that very reason. Well, he's doing the same, the same that we said about Mike a while ago. He's trying to get loose and he's hitting balls. And even if he's taking just a little bit of the worst of the worst of it on the shot, he's willing to do that just if he can keep pocketing balls. You know, that's not a bad idea what he has here in the six, but he's not going to do it. If shoot the six and bump the ten off the rail, see, and then shoot three, nine, ten, but he's going to go. Now he's got a little <laughs> bit of a problem. Looks like he's going to go two or three rails on the three and get on the, either ball. He can get on the 10 two and then go 10 six. That's what he has to do. Watch out. Do. He's going to go into the 10 here. Hit that. He's really playing haphazardly <laughs> out there. And I don't mean to, to laugh because he, he seems to be, you know, quite a strong young player, but he's mm -hmm. lacking in, 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 in knowledge and, uh, and he's really making these uh, runouts much more difficult. Now he's totally lost control of the cue ball, and I think this time it's going to cost him because he's ended up on the bottom cushion, near the bottom cushion, and to pocket the 10 ball is going to be a task in itself, let alone play position for the Billy, break ball. If I was a betting man, I would bet that he makes this ball. Well, I certainly wouldn't bet against him because he's shown us that he has, certainly has the skills to pocket balls. Well, with. not hitting at that speed, I wouldn't have bet. I thought he'd hit that soft to come off the rail. It looked like he had a safety in mind more than anything else. Look well, I don't know if he had went. that in mind, but let's put it this way. He's left the table in pretty good shape considering the position that he was in. 78, Mr. Siegel, 32. Siegel, on the other hand, seems to be a little ill-fated in this regard that, uh, you know, he's finally come back to the table, but look what he has offered to him, you know, nothing really that he, uh, that he likes, and off of a miss, you know. I think that's a, a little bit of an injustice, but nevertheless, it's something you're gonna have to deal with, and I'm certainly sure he's aware of that. Now he has to show us his ability to deal with uh, situations like Safety. this. Playing safe here. 12 ball. I believe, he re, I believe he reconsidered and he's playing the 12. I don't know if he I think he has to go in the pocket if he shoots this ball. He may, have, may even go off the 10 in right. the pocket. Right, right. He played a safe, matter yeah. of fact, and uh, he overcut the ball. <clears throat> I thought for sure he'd shoot that 10, but he wanted to get the break shot out of there. Because he's such a great shot maker, you saw it, then he hit that ball there. I thought he'd probably shoot that 10, to tell you the truth. The 10 was a, a very difficult shot. Sure it was. I don't think there was anything wrong with the shot he opted to shoot. I just think that he executed the shot poorly. He hit the, uh, the small ball really too thinly. And, uh, Boy, it's hard to hit that ball nice, don't miss that 10. 
hit it that nice. I don't think he can do this because uh, he won't get anything out of it if he only makes this ball. Yeah, it looks like he's rather flat on this on this shot. It doesn't give him much much to work with. Well, he looks like he can bounce it here one rail. But the, the key is in whether that's out of the rack or not. He looks like he can he can come into this rail here and come out like that. Okay, as soon as the, the referee racks the balls up, we're going to utilize this telestrator, and uh, you're going to show us what he can do, if anything. Okay, what I'm trying to do here is play that ball on the high side of the hole here, or down in here, and then take and try to bounce this and come over here this way. Let's see what happens with it. Oh, see, he had room to get to the rail and everything. Yeah, he went forward. So he was playing safety. He went forward. Oh, yeah, he was playing, playing safety. He played safety. Uh -huh. Now, Mike, being the more knowledgeable player, certainly should, uh, should have the advantage and the safety from, from this position. And so therefore, he should be the player that comes up with the first shot. You're going to that second or third ball here. Take a scratch. Safety's not allowed. He's got the 13 looking a little good. Yeah, but I don't know if that was that effective enough. You know, he can he can go two cushions up table and take an intentional here. Yeah, but the 13 might lay pretty good. Safety. That's what we try to do is loosen those balls up and then get the player to go up table because a lot of times we might loosen something up and make a dead or a billiard off the top or something mm -hmm. like that. See where the 12 4 is? And it may go unnoticed. It might go unnoticed. I see. That's a very valid point. I'm, not, I'm glad you shared that with me. I'll use that later on to beat you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. You know, I, I, have, I have showed uh, a lot of different players from different countries little things, and it's come back to haunt me. Yeah, isn't, that, isn't that the truth? <laughs> He's got a shot on the one, but there's no reward. And after he makes it, I don't think he can hit the stack with it. Let's he get might a, be able to. I don't know. Let's let's get a score here and find out exactly yeah. what Siegel's looking at right now. Schmidt has 78 balls. Mike Siegel has 30. He trails in this match by almost 50 balls. This is a race to 150. So Siegel certainly uh, has his work cut out for him now. If he didn't hit from the offset, he certainly has it cut out for him now. I don't even know if you would make him a favorite from this position. See, what I like to do is I like I like billiards. So if he can make this one, if he don't play safe on, he goes two rails. He might not. He might have a nice billiard off that twelve on the floor. No, he has to watch two cushions, a scratch two cushions in the corner after he hits the stack. Here. He's playing safe. Oh, he's there playing he safe. Yeah. Safety Which is a very smart move. He hit it nice too. And, and I think it's a smart move because he's playing someone that he really should beat to the shot. And that's not the type of a shot that he wanted to start off with because he's really throwing everything up in the air, shooting that shot offensively. So therefore, he figured that eventually he would end up with a better situation than the one he was confronted with there. And that's what he set out to do, try to end up with a better situation for himself than, than what he had. That's going to reach. Yeah. Speed control, folks. Speed well, I have control. great speed from up here. <laughs> <laughs> Siegel elects to take his uh, five-minute break. Okay, Siegel uh, opts to take his break because I, I don't think he was really happy with the results of that particular shot because he definitely is at a disadvantage in con when you consider the way the balls are positioned on the table. He really is going to be hard-pressed to, to walk away from the table without giving up a shot here, Dallas. Yeah, I agree with you. And he's uh, the one thing about an older player uh, like Mike playing a younger player. This younger player's eager and he'd like nothing better than to put a notch in his belt by beating you. And then, uh, like uh, Billy said, like you said a while ago about uh, Mike uh, has to kind of shut the critics down a little bit because he's been away for a while. Uh, you you got to be very careful with a guy like this because he's subject to wake up at any time. And we're, we're, we're sitting here waiting for it to happen because we believe it is going to happen. Yeah, exactly. 
And uh, now, in this situation, Dallas, when you're playing a player you feel you're a favorite over, okay, number one, uh, uh, and, you're, and you're trailing by 50 balls, 78 to 30, or around that, you know, that type of deficit, do you take an intentional scratch, maybe back scratch a couple of times and try to, you know, trying to see, number one, what your opponent's going to do if you take an intentional scratch. He may do something stupid. Right. There's, uh, that's there's a, real a possibility. Good point. Okay? Very good point. Yes. And uh, not only that, I think you, you back also... back him up a couple balls. You can take right. him back a couple points yeah. and... That's good strategy. Yeah. Take him back a couple points if he's willing to play that game with you. And if he's not willing to play that game with you, maybe he'll do something that'll cost him even more than a couple mm -hmm. points. So therefore, if I were Mike, you know, if I were he, when I came back to the table, I would definitely take an intentional scratch, maybe even two. You know, I would back him up as far as I could, lengthening out the match, because that's what I want right now. I do trail in the match by 40 to 50 balls. I would want the match a little bit longer. And maybe that extra ball or two or three or four balls at the end of the match may make the difference. That's right. I agree. Now, Siegel took a, a break, and I do believe it's a cigarette break, and I think it's going to be a little longer than the normal break. So why don't you and I take a break, and we'll be back when he gets back. Okay, sounds good. Okay, evidently Siegel has worked his way back into the tournament area, and he's at the table. And let's see, Dallas, let's see if he opts to take that intentional scratch, which I think is advisable at this, at this point. If nothing else, it lets him get a little bit of a feel at the table to get to look at things and try to get a little comfortability in there. And uh, yeah, and, and doing this here isn't just, uh, he's loosening up a couple of balls here. He can, he can create a few dead shots or something where a young player will overlook things like that. And maybe he'll even create a position where if, if uh, Schmidt makes a little bit of an error in, in an intentional scratch, that is, he may leave him a real good Good safety play. Good angle. Off yeah, the exactly. Yeah. So therefore, a lot of merit into what he just did, taking that very simple intentional scratch. He backs up his opponent a ball or two. He gives his a, a opponent an opportunity to do something foolish. And he also creates another position for his opponent to think about in terms of taking the scratch along with him. Maybe he'll leave him something that'll play simple. Now, I'll, I'll give a little bit of information here that perhaps I shouldn't be given because you can't be given it all the way at once, folks. But uh, what he opted to do there, what was very nice, is that he pushed two or three balls on that safety, now, uh, on that scratch. Now, like this young man is doing, see, he just doing a little bit. Well, Mike is trying to create something and make something happen. Not only for the purpose of maybe making a ball, but he gets the balls into a position. Now he can play a better safety without Absolutely. giving up anything. Look at the situation he's confronted with here. He compared, all around. compared to what he had, had he not taken the intentional right. scratch. Notice, after contacting the 13, you'll then reposition the cue ball down there, that bottom corner pocket. Yet really leaving practically nothing for his opponent to shoot at. And if he does shoot, he's probably shooting at a very low percentage shot. Exactly. He'll come two rails into the stack. Maybe no, this is better. Yeah, he wants him to. He wants him to shoot that seven. We would call this a sucker shot, right? It's a low percentage business. shot. Yeah. So therefore, by Mike's really uh, his ability and in, in, in his in his knowledge to take that intentional scratch, he's created a better situation for himself, and he's back scratched his opponent one ball. Now, some of the old timers that I learned from would say that this here would be an excellent shot on a five by 10. But on a four and a half by nine, there's guys that used to drill you with this stuff. Joe Bolsa's being one of them. I remember when I played Joe so many times, I couldn't leave him a shot like that seven ball. He'd drill it on me. <laughs> and it's a tough shot. But look, here, he left look what he's did. He, right. he, he finagled around, and it looks like he may have a shot on the eight. It does, it looks very close. Very close. I don't know if he has anything in, in regard to uh, playing position off of this ball. But uh, he may have the eight here, Dallas. I think he's more worried about getting out here if he makes this ball. Or fouling because yeah, the ball exactly. is so close. Mm, very, uh, very. Uh, this is a great shot we have on the monitor. If, this is very close to a foul here. If he doesn't, if he doesn't hit this... Uh -oh. oh my, that was a definitely a push. Yes, I agree. That was definitely a push, and the referee did not call it. No. Nope. 
I don't know what happened there, but that the way that cue ball took off there. Oh, my. Everybody knows you can't follow a ball like that. That's strictly a push in. But sometimes you're so intimidated as a referee, one of great players at the table, you think that he's going to do something perfect all the time, and he's never going to foul. So therefore, when you see that type of reaction, you may be a little hesitant about calling a foul against a seagull or, or yourself. Or, you know, I'm talking about referees who are intimidated also. Well, you know, that they, they had a rule, though, one time, Billy. They used to play in the old rules that one free stroke of the cue was legal. As long as you hit it with one free, that, not a slow stroke, a good, hard, one free stroke of the cue was legal. For even close like that, and they wouldn't call a foul on you. Well, but they changed that rule that if they're within a ball and you go through that ball uh, over a chalk length or a cue ball, that was a foul. So in all intensive purposes, you and I would recognize that. We'd call that foul. Well, what is he shooting here? He might have the, the 15, or we can't tell. Whatever he's shooting here, he's not really comfortable with. I thought he was going to shoot the seven. Well, he might be shooting the seven. Uh, 15 is close, but the seven is also very close. And the three ball is hampering his bridge hand somewhat mm -hmm. also. Well, he finally hit a ball accurately. That was a very, very crucial shot for him to put down considering the score and considering how well he's been performing up until this point. So therefore, that shot was probably, if he goes on to win this match, you can look back to that shot and say that's the shot that enabled him to go forward and win this match, if he goes on to win this match. That was a big shot. Big shot. Free shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It looks like that he has the four and the, th and the, and the 11, mm -hmm. both of those balls for a potential break ball. Six. But he must move that six from the corner pocket, which will then open up the pocket for the 11 or the four if he needs to play position for that ball or for those balls in that pocket. So I look for him to shoot, what, the 14, then the six here? Yeah, and then leave the, I leave the 14 or, or whatever it is down here with the nine so mm -hmm. that he can go like nine, then he has a choice. Right. So he'll move up the table a little bit now, I think. He may even go for the nine here. I think he'll go 13, 3, 12, and come back into the area where he'll have a choice on the 12 or the nine. He might, you're right, he might go for the nine here because he might not like to work down here at the bottom of the rack. He might like to work real high on the balls. Yeah, he may not use the nine because he might not like the angle that the nine offers him. He's going to shoot the 12, maybe the nine next. Now he's going to shoot the nine. Well, what is possible? And, uh, and once in a while, he might leave 13-3 to last. But I exactly. don't like to do that, but that's yeah. what he'll probably do. Well, I think do. that's what he's going to do. Uh, he's, he's certainly not going to uh, leave one, two balls down by the foot spot, then shoot the 13-3 and come down and get the, because that's really playing foolishly. He's going to clear the th three balls on this end of the table, and then he's going to use the, the, the three ball as the key ball to drop nicely for the break ball, which will be either be the four or the 11. And it looks like it's going to be the 11. No, he's going to shoot the 11. He's going to use the, no, he's going to shoot the four. <laughs> okay. Okay, he's going to shoot the 4, 14, 13, 3, and then come straight down table for position for the break ball, which isn't all that bad no, because of where the, the position of the 11. He'd have to get awful bad on this ball not to do that. I mean, he's, he's perfect. He just bounces an inch. He's perfect. Now, he'll probably strike this shot with the speed to hit the bottom cushion with I the agree. cue ball. And then he'll come off the bottom cushion, which will increase the accuracy of the shot somewhat. That's right. And now he's repositioned the cue ball, really ideally, with a he, nice he angle. He can go straight up or two rails with it. He's, he's laying, he, he has a choice. However he likes to stroke it. See how he stroked it? Mm -hmm. A lot of times a player will prefer that because he feels confidence in being able to stroke the ball. Well, not only that, is that 
coming into the 11 from that angle, it looks like he's on that good line all the time. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the harder he hits it, the closer to that ball he will be, but invariably he will be on that good line the entire way. So therefore, that's one of the reasons why he opted to shoot the shot in the fashion that he did, the, the three ball that is. Well, that's what Joe Deal used to call, uh, my uh, uh, mentor used to call the double angle system to where if you shot a shot that way, it would be awful hard for you to lose the angle, not get some kind of angle, whereas right. the other way you can lose it pretty easily. Right, if you miss hit it slightly, you go off angle and make the shot, the break shot more difficult and maybe even lose your market entirely on the brick shot. He wanted to draw that more. He hit that and it didn't do what he wanted to do. But what does he have? That's what I mean. I don't think he has much. He may not have anything. But in the event that he doesn't have anything, he does have this. The scratches. Does he have them on scratches yet? I, I don't think he has them on scratch, but look, the position of the eight and the four, he can he can go off the 13, sending the cue ball up here, not leaving anything. He's got something. He, he must have something. He's looking at it. He's take a look at that. What the heck is he looking at there? He's playing the seven ball. I don't know if I would do this because, you know, I did point out that if he opts to shoot off the 13, sending the cue ball in this area here, notice the position of the eight and the four here, blocking the shot on the two. The nine won't go because the two precludes him from pocketing the nine. And he's really going to have a, a tough problem. That is Schmidt, that is, dealing with that situation from up there. Now, Siegel, on the other hand, by shooting this very difficult combination 12 seven, you know, he's. Uh, I think he's, he's, I don't know, I, I, I wouldn't shoot this shot. I, I definitely wouldn't shoot this shot. If he goes up table, he's got to keep the guy over here by the pocket, because if he gets away a little bit, then the guy's going to shoot the combination on him, the seven. So he's, Yeah, well, that's true. That may be uh, something that I didn't consider. But the way to play that safety then would be maybe off the nine. I think he can hit the nine. He just can't make it. Uh, this, this really isn't a bad shot, but... But he looks like he's trying to overcut it. I don't think he's got to hit it that thin. Wow. He's just, this is going to be, oh, my goodness. Oh, my, oh gosh, my goodness. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I, I didn't like that shot no, at all. I agree. I didn't like it because you're playing a player that you figured out manage. And why he's throw to draw back, you yeah. know, why throw it up in the air? Yeah. I just, I just, I, Especially when you're trying to get in stroke. You cannot do it when you should out manage the kid till you get in stroke. The young man you should try to out, out manage him until you can get in stroke. You know, he's given this young player too many opportunities. And, and Schmidt, even though he's relatively inexperienced, certainly has the firepower he's to run 100 balls. You know, exactly. And so, therefore, given enough opportunities, he's going to finally come to the realization that, hey, listen, I think I can definitely win this match. Now, you see how fast he's going down table? You shouldn't really go down table this fast for those two balls. And why is that? Because the, if you don't, if, there's nothing out here really manageable for a break shot except the eight ball. And there's a very good possibility that you might be able to use one of those two down there. You can use a break shot down table. Okay, that's a very valid point, and I'm glad you brought that up because I myself would have done the same thing, but not anymore. Thank you. And I'll use that possibly to uh, assassinate <laughs> yes, someone. You. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and then I'll say, hey, thanks a lot for that little bit of information you shared with me. Just remember, we're friends. <laughs> He's got to clear that seven from that pocket. Oh, See, my now goodness. He, now he mm -mm. tried to hit those balls there. Four. There was no reason to no do reason that. To there do was no reason to do None that. No, because, uh, particularly when he had the congestion on the other side of the table, because if he didn't succeed in, in accomplishing what he set out to do, there was, there was a chance that he would end up in this position, which he has. Now what's he going to do? Well, you know, you see, I'm a billiard player, so I start looking at billiards. I look at the cue ball off the 14, things like that on the 7, you know. And, uh, I mean, just as an, as an extra opted thing that I can go to if I can't find anything I can shoot. Mm -hmm. But I would much rather play the cue ball than to cut the ball because mm -hmm. I have no control of where it's going to go there. 
Might he's playing straight, but he's playing the he's seven playing ball combination. combination. Yeah. yeah. And this is a very difficult shot to shoot because you really can't control the cue ball that well with and this you shot. You got to hit this ball so good. No, he's playing the billiard. Yeah, but he don't have to draw it. You can bounce that ball easy with a high ball. No, oh, he he cut the ball. Now watch, he can't control the cue ball. That's what I was saying. Let's Four. see Four. what happens Four. here. Four. Okay. Now Siegel has an, op an unexpected Four. opportunity Four. back Four. at the Four. table, Four. much Four. sooner than he expected. And, you know, if I was Siegel, I'd really, uh, you know, take a little inventory on what's been happening here. I'd like to say a little something and it's, uh, uh, that I think is, you might find that it's happened to you a time or two. I never play Mike Siegel where I have this many opportunities. Well, no one has. No one has. And that's, once again, a testament to that, to that fact that, you know, he does have some rust on him that he didn't think he had. But evidently, you know, it's something that wasn't there before. Yeah. But I mean, even if he's playing all the time and he has a bad game, I don't seem to find no. him. <laughs> well, even his bad games aren't this bad. All right. Okay. But uh, this is another Mike Ziggle that we're looking at here. And quite frankly, uh, I, I don't think we're going to see this, this side of him again after this match. So, you know, couldn't he seven shoot ball. that 13 and the 7 there? Does he have to shoot 7 and go up? I don't know. He probably See, he had room to look like the one in there shot the combination yeah. softly. and. So, yeah, Mike is really a uh, perfectionist. And uh, to be away from the game for as long as he has and then come back and expect Three. yourself now to play. Now you can open this 1-2 up. Off 12. Mm -hmm. Hit it with a little stroke so you might get the 1 for a break shot. See, I hit it harder than that. See, because it's going to wind yeah. up over mm -hmm. here and block the pocket. Excellent point. Excellent point. Because he really didn't have a, a real good break shot from the position that, that he has on the table now. So, therefore, manufacture something. And that was a very... Plus, you're not taking the chance point. when you do it from there. Now, here he's got to go across because uh, the 15's there. He's got to get up high on it. Okay, he got up there. You know what I thought I might have do. shot the deuce and went underneath and come around and shot the 15 and went up and done something, you know. But that's going to show you the different ways that you can do things. You know, I thought that he could even play position for the two, cut the two in and go behind the one and kick it out a little bit. This is a smart shot right here. He opens up that eight ball for a break shot. No, that's the right shot, I think. You leave it, it'll torture you. <laughs> Now he's going to have to reposition the cue ball back t down table for, for the one next. Yeah, he was afraid he might have gotten locked up on the 15. That's why he didn't shoot it the first time. Mm -hmm. One ball. Do you think there's a there's a problem? In, well, he's not going to use a, the 15 for a break now. I thought that he would. He, he He'll use the 8, I think, for sure. Now he's going to have to draw one rail and shoot the 10 8. And, and from the angle that he has on the 15, it looks like he's going to end up a great distance from the 7. Because he has to go back and then cross table, and he's going to end up down table. No, he like. shouldn't. He can hit this with a little reverse, kill it. He even hit it with a little running. Mm -hmm. He, he went off the cushion. This ain't bad. He's pretty good here. All he's got to do is pull it back about 6 8 inches. Oh, he really went back. I yeah, like I think he went back. Inches. He went back a little too far. Yeah. Now, now he's going to reduce the size of the pocket because of the speed that he has to hit this shot with. Had he not gone back as far as he did, he wouldn't have had to hit the shot with with, with, with a, you know a greater he's got speed. Got to warp this one now to open him up. Right. Early. And that's going to reduce the size of the pocket somewhat. And he's going to have to hit this very accurately. And if he doesn't, he's not going to get credit for the ball. Mike might fool us, though. He might hit this with a medium stroke and catch the last two balls of the rack and get something down here in the end rail. But he likes to hit them, but let's see what he does. Mm. He hit it with a good stroke because after contacting the second ball, he was able to go forward without scratching. Yep. So I'm certainly sure he's glad that's over with. The balls are opened up uh, decently, and it looks like that he can start creating some stuff now, because that's what he gets paid for. He's got to utilize his creativity 
along with his kills and work his way through this wreck. 11. He's got options here. He'll probably try to get on the four, but if he was just lie down, he can always go three, four, but he might go four with the protection of the three. He might want the four first. That's what he's going to do. He's going to draw into the 11, two, and leave the three. That way the 11 will hit the seven and open him up a little bit. But pocket the ball. But I wouldn't follow this. He looks like he's, that's it, just that's like it. that. There you go. Now he's got the 14 for a break ball. Yeah, if he can work himself, you know, onto the nine there, he off the eleven or something. Nine now. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, I, I, wouldn't you want to shoot the nine off the uh, off in the other pocket? Yeah. If I if the fourteen don't come into play, yeah, I'd like Very to ball. I'd like to go up between the nine and eleven now and shoot the nine. Yeah, like this. Now, mm -hmm. you know, he can shoot he's, the he's nine. He's got to shoot the nine now. Yeah. And if he don't draw too deep, he'll hit the seven into the ten, hit the one, and nine it ball. won't disturb the fourteen, and everything will be just mm -hmm. nice. Yep, just like that. And there Real he goes. Nice. He's on his way. He's got the balls open. Now he's only got one bad ball here, and that's the 11 ball because it's underneath the ball. But he might go seven. Well, now look at this layout. If you can get these out of here and get that one 16. out of there, if you can go seven, 15, 11, one rail out on the 14. See, I'm always looking to play checkers when I play this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, and I'm not a good checker player. <laughs> tell you, that. you recognize these patterns as quick as anyone I've ever seen play the game or, or listen to us uh, play the game. Because right away, you said 1, 15, 11, 14. Those are the last four balls on the table to try to figure out a way to end up fairly straight on the one. Which ball will give you the best you know, chance of doing that? Because Mike doesn't like that one ball for a key ball, being it's so close to the rail. So he'll go after it now. 18. And if he could get down in after that tour, he might bounce up off the rail a little bit and go 2 Ooh. 7. He might, he might play 1 11, 2 7, 15. Yep, that's a good one, too. Now, see, he's got a nice angle to drop nicely for the 11 here. Yeah. No, he's not going to do that. He's going to go 2 7, 15, 11. Okay, that's just that's the same pattern you chose. But attack and get from a different angle. Yeah, he'll, this is good. None this end, shooting him up the other end is okay. Mm hmm. Now all he needs to do is is attain some sort of a straight in shot on the seven. Perfect. Twenty. Well, he's got himself uh, a, little awkward, a little bit. A little high. awkward here. Yeah, a little bit. Didn't right. like that. No. And so he wanted actually to be straight, or he's exactly. favoring the other side a little bit. So he f he has fallen on the non-professional side. But he he he'll hit this. Let's see if he stiffs this mm. when the center ball. Comes okay, if he does, right. the pocket plays a lot smaller. Oh my! Oh. How could he hit it that good and that cue ball go where it went? I because thought it would he hit it, he nice. hit it below center, looked like. Now well, he has he's going to have to go two rails with the eleven. He's got no choice. Yeah, he's definitely struggling. Oh, he does have a choice if he could roll this very gently and touch that fourteen, and then slide up under. I'll do things like that once in a while, but it's harder to do. Mm -hmm, much harder. He definitely is struggling, you know, and uh, it's going to take some time. It looks like, and uh, he's all right. This is a key shot right here, two rails. Hit it nice. It'll, he'll be there. He's there. Nothing matter with that. Isn't exactly what I would want to end up with, but uh, it looks like it's workable. I find I find uh, a couple different things that I use when I play that seems to help me a little bit, and that is in the in the early stages of the game. I like a little bit shallower angles so that I can build up my confidence a little bit. Plus, see how the rack reacts to those kind of angles on that particular cloth, and it uh, gives so it gives me two functions there. It gives me a chance to get a little loose. To be a little accurate because it's a little bit easier shot, and um, I get to see how the balls open up. Now I don't think he has the luxury of uh, of that now because he trails and it's getting late in the match. You know what I'm saying? He's got quite a bit of angle here. He can warp this pretty good. See that? They opened up beautiful. He's got the 11. Uh, he's got the 10 over here. He's got all kinds of shots. Okay, it, it worked out well. I didn't think that he was going to open up the balls as easily as he did and as nicely as he did. But of course, with uh, with the experience that you have. He bumped a six here, I think. No, he didn't. 
You didn't want to mess with it. 26. Well, he, he's afraid he might have got locked up on the nine or something. Yeah, when he hit him with the nine. We got always we talk about hitting him, but we really got to be careful and stay away from the balls. Work around the ball is nice. Four ball. Now if he can go four or nine, hit the deuce, knock it out for a break. He's, but he's got the one. I keep forgetting Mike's a, a left-handed player, so he might want to leave that one, but I don't know now. He might go into him now with that one. one ball. This ain't bad. He can draw it, but he's, like got, he's, gonna, he's got to draw through this. He's going to hit the 12 out here off a couple clicks. Oops, nope, he drew it. 28. I thought he'd get better action than that, though. That yeah. six ball, see, is going to come back to haunt him. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. He didn't clear it. Or move it. Yep. Eleven ball. I think your first impression was the best. He didn't clear it. I think it was a very easy billiard where he could have shot the ball, shot the six, then shot the four. One ball. But you know, uh, Billy, I miss very few patterns and balls from over here. Oh, I'll tell you, you, you are. <laughs> You are really great at, at choosing the right shot. In the uh, chair, huh. I, I have trouble missing them in the chair. Well, I, I, you know, I mean, it's just wonderful to listen to you talk. Poor Mike, I feel right now. I mean, I know what he's going through. He just, just hasn't found it yet, but he will. Thirty. And he's got awkward on the seven. You know, he has to clear that nine as well because that opens up the pocket for the six on the other side of the table. You know he can hit that. He can hit that five here. I don't know if he wants to do that, but he can hit that five here. Okay, now he's going to take the nine off the table, which will then open up the pocket for the six on the other side of the table, which will then open up the pocket for the twelve and the two. That's right. So therefore, there's different ways of attacking it. Sometimes you wait a little too long, though. If he, do, if he goes this way, though, he's not going to have anything. He's got to go 9-6, like you said, and go. And before I'd go 10-12, I would go I would go 12. I mean, 2-12, I would go 12 so I could push the 5 off for a break, giving me two options, just 13 or the deuce to shoot. Mm -hmm. If he gets perfect oh, on it with a little beautiful, follow, it's beautiful. beautiful. So therefore, you want to attain a more of a straight angle on the 12 yeah. to just Brush that uh, five ball maybe with a little draw, and just brush it oh, and you get can away. You actually hit this one a follow if you hit it if you get kind of straight on. But if you get just on the two, you got to worry about bumping the five. He can do that and draw it into thirteen too. No, he, he That's can, what he'll do. He can bump the five out here. Bump the five and hit the thirteen. And then he'll have the twelve. Let's see if he kind of just stiffs this just a little bit. He missed it. Oh my gosh. And he missed the five. Thirty-four. He missed the five. He missed the five, and it's uh, hmm. now he has a problem. He can still do the same thing. He can shoot in the corner, draw over, shoot to twelve. He's, he's pretty he pretty awkward on the thirteen to do that. See, that's what he's looking at. He might even here's that's what he, you know what I'd do here now. I'm not taking any chances. I shoot the 13, slide over, shoot the 12 and the five, get the cue ball. I'd stick it in the rack if I could and go 12, five, stick it in the rack, and then get cue ball hand behind the line and get over on this side and try breaking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're just giving him another option. Yeah. Now this requires a little bit more control though than the average bear. Let's see what he does here. Whatever he does here, he's going to probably hit it with the warp speed. It looks like to me because he really hasn't shown shown us that he was timid. At least I mean he's he's really stroking balls when he needs to. Now you see how much speed he got out of that? That means he could have hit that a lot softer. Yeah, but he can't pocket the 12 from the angle he's left himself there, so therefore he's going to probably have to shoot the three. He can't make that. Looks like he can. I think it's too thin, but of course if he shoots it, then he'll probably be able to put it down. 36. Well, no, all he needs to do is pocket the five and stick in the rack, but of course he's lost the angle for that. <laughs> 
Can try to get an angle out and go two rails. Let's see what he's done to the score. Uh, current run, 36. What do you think? He's on a current run of 36 balls, and I guess that's going to tighten up this match quite a bit. Yeah, it should be about 66, 78, right, right in that neighborhood. No, he's lost his market on the break, and it, it looks like he's awkward on the on the angle on oh, the uh, spot be. ball. 37, shooting a five ball. Score is Mr. Schmidt, 81. Eagle, 81. Ooh. So this looks like it's a pretty tight game to me, Dallas, 81 apiece. We're going to change the tape. We'll be right back. Okay. Okay, we're back, and all we missed was Seagulls naturally played safe off the ball that was respotted at the head, at the head end of the table. And now Schmidt makes an appearance at the table. This match is tied up at 81 balls apiece. You have to, you have to make, you have to make Siegel a favorite from this position. Oh, he's closing in. Schmidt has to go two cushions. I think he's just trying to put a two rail behind the rack. That's good speed. Good shot. Mike's got a good safety, good counter safety here. I don't see what's wrong with going two cushions up to the upper left-hand corner here. Why, you know, because what is he going to do? If you go two cushions and take the intentional scratch, you shoot over the rack with the bridge. And go up the other? Go two okay. cushions and yeah, go up the other. That, you know, take the intentional scratch. I agree. That's a good shot. He left him a shot on his 11, I think. You know, you don't want to do this. See, because the guy, the, the kid's looking to shoot, you know what I mean? Yeah. You do not want to give him an opportunity to beat you, even though it's a low percentage shot. You know, he's going to put it down maybe 35% of the time. And that may be enough to beat you. You know, when you, when you, I just don't, I don't like that. These pockets, if you don't hit them hard, they'll, they're, they're very forgiving. See here? Yeah, Look that's, there. that's see? exactly what he did. You see, I didn't like his, his, his option. You know, I didn't like what he did. I myself would have taken an intentional scratch, repositioning the cue ball down at the other end of the table. You have him on one foul. He really can't do much from there. You know, he can't do anything offensively. He's going to have to either play some sort of a very difficult safety or take another intentional. He's going into the balls too much. He's going into them here instead of working them balls. You know, he's, he better be very, very careful here. And he should, he should have got out, turned out that 14 out now. He might have to go 6 4. See what I mean? He's getting in trouble way too much. You know, I think he got lucky. He might have a 5 in the side off to 15. Yeah, he may have the 4 also. But from our vantage point, this shot seems much more difficult than it. Uh, than it actually is. So therefore, he does have a four shot on the four. And as accurately as he hits balls, I wouldn't be surprised to see him pocket the four. Well, he hit it poorly. Siegel with another unexpected opportunity back at the table. He really has to feel, you know, fortunate to be able to get back to the table practically unscathed, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, not only did he, did he manage to tie this matchup, but he's also, you know, developed a, a, a newfound confidence that he's going to win this match because even if he doesn't execute as well as he thinks he can, his opponent certainly isn't doing anything to stop him from winning the match. And sometimes, uh, sometimes when a player, when you're not playing good and a guy makes you, he'll make you get in a little bit of stroke, then, uh, then that's, that's dangerous. Yeah, he got on the eight. <laughs> I don't think he uh, he wanted to get on the eight there. But as long as he's going to shoot the eight, he might as well break open the one from the five, give himself more options for the future here. If I was going to, from right now, guess what he was going to use for a break ball, I would think probably the 12 ball on either side, preferably off of this side. But the three ball is laying there where it could give him a good angle. Absolutely, and and, and uh, he really doesn't have much. He's thinking about breaking off the two right now, two ball. 
he really take. doesn't. Yeah, he really doesn't have much in terms of coming up with a good break ball from his position. So therefore, he's going to either have to manufacture one or utilize that three twelve layout to drop nicely for the twelve, utilizing the twelve on the side for the break shot, shooting the three and ending up somewhere where the cue ball is now, shooting the 12 on the side for the break. But of course, once he eliminates the, the three ball here, he loses his market right away for that, that uh, possibility. Now I call this here a struggling pattern. The reason why I call this a struggling pattern is because I've shot him so many times. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would probably, I would probably elect to go four two hey, the last two balls. How about this? How about I know shoot, what he's going to do. He's going to try to shoot the four and bump the fourteen out, or yeah, shoot the two, the two, the and, two bump and bump the fourteen. fourteen. Exactly. That's yeah. what he's going to do. He's got. He's going to try to manufacture a break ball right now. He will. He's a good bigger player too. And that he's hit it perfectly, nice. and that's a really a really well executed shot. And it looks like he's really opened up the door for himself in this particular rat, in the sense that now he has a break ball, and it looks like he can manage himself, manage himself through this rack and possibly even through the next because of the 14. You don't like the 15 because it's a little bit low. I mean, I mean, it's a little bit high. He would rather have that 15 down the other way three or four inches so he could go 315. He's probably going to go 12, 5, 315. See, he don't. He, he'll probably take the angle, uh, come back a little further than what he is, and then shoot the 15 in the same pocket. Come one rail and shoot the 15 in the same pocket, now, so that he gets the angle that he wants. I mean, once he comes back, he he can either shoot the 15 or the 13. He has both balls. You know, he can shoot either one. 13 balls. Let's see if he comes cross table on this just a little bit. I like yep, this because this will put him closer to the 14. And once again, he's going to have to shoot this with his right hand. But once again, he'll utilize that being on that angle, coming off that side cushion toward the break ball. He'll stay in line all the while. No, he went straight down the table. I don't know. He's, now he's landed quite a distance from the 14. You know, this could be a problem. The score is Mr. Schmidt, 80. Mr. Siegel, 92. Mr. Schmidt, 82. You know, in, in the past, in the past, this wouldn't be a problem for Siegel because he never had a problem dealing with distance. No, this would be a hanger. Right, but of course, it's it's not the past, you know, and times have changed. And frankly, you know, he has more of a problem dealing with shots of this nature than he did years ago. But let's see what he does with it. I'm wondering if he's going to just swat it with a good center ball and bounce off the rack or draw it, and then he'll wind up on the end rail, so... Wow, Very he nice. hit it pure. Hit it Watch center, out, the two yep. may come and spoil everything. Look, he's got the eight. Got the eight, and then the six he can go over, or the seven, or the ten, or four on the side. He's got all kinds of options. Well, now he's he going to have to. No, he's got the 15. Yeah, he's got like. the 15. That's a nice ball right there. Yeah, 15, three. You know yeah. what he had? He hit might bump the one. Hit it softly. All right. Yeah, it's going to shoot to three here. Three Follow down for maybe the six. Open up the pocket for the nine. Fifteen. Well, he's going to eliminate the nine now. And he won't need to open up the pocket for it because it'll five, be gone. Five ball should be a break ball. Nine ball. He, he, he might bump this 15, but I don't like it. Oh, he said, I don't know if he's gotten the shot, if he's ended up with no, a he's shot here. he shoot to five. He's got to five. It's not a type of a shot that I would want to shoot, considering the position that he started started at. No, he didn't like what he did there. He hit it with authority. 17. Didn't, didn't roll it. Taking away a little bit of the skid factor and also increasing the accuracy of the shot. You got to come down now and take one of these two out or both. I of think them. you got to take them both out. If you can see the pattern, oh, he, he didn't come down far enough. He's really falling. He's all right. He can he can bump the 15. He can stiff this with a little center ball or just follow it. 
Yeah, I thought he might bump oh that. Oh, my. I don't think it's a bad idea to shoot the one here. You know, I think he should take a look at the one here. I think he's going to use that for a break. Well, you know, he's gotten himself awkward on the 15. Unless he goes rail first, possibly. The telestrator looks like he's got a pretty good, he can maybe pump that two rails, we'll see. And he, he doesn't want to take away the one ball because he's going to lose his market on the, on the break ball, so he's opting to uh, shoot the 15 and pop it like Dallas suggested. Now he'll now he'll kick and draw it for the combination, or he can take the one out and then take the two balls and break off the two. And actually, it looks like the 11 might be out too, but we can't tell from here. Hmm. It looks like he may be playing position for the one here. Twenty-two. One ball. He might fool us here. He might bump that 13 too and have the deuce in the side. Or, but he's he's thinking that that 11 might be out. If that 11's out. It's very it's very marginal whether the 11 is out far enough. You know he would like to test it and see him put that rack over there. But I don't think that's legal to do that. You know so therefore he's going to have to guess and it's got to be a good one. Because that 11 looks to me like it's very close. So if to that rack this. area. Yep, he did. And he bumped the 13. Look at that. And, and the 13 most mm -hmm. certainly is out. So therefore, he's manufactured a break ball in the 13. And uh, not quite sure whether the 11 was, was out far enough for that to be a break ball. So he uh, obviously changed his mind manufacturing one in the 13, which was an excellent shot. Very good shot. And by the way, it was a shot that you pointed out about 20, 30 seconds before he shot it. <clears throat> now he's going to have to stretch here or shoot it opposite hand. Go two rails and right out in the center of the table. We can That's reach, too reach hard. It good. No, he's all right. He's okay? Sure, he's okay. Yeah, this is, I tell you, I like this shot on some equipment. When you really wrap it, the cue ball gets off the rack just enough to wear three or four balls that loosen them up nice. It, but not on all equipment, but on some equipment, this seems to work pretty good. Well, he's going to have to hit this with, what, a punch stroke or a draw stroke? Which? Just a little below center, more of a little, stun yeah, stroke. Yeah, a little below center, so therefore he doesn't go back too far. Right. But back far enough to get away from the stack. In fact, he might even come to the side rail with it if he hits it a certain way. Fall down here towards his first diamond. Let's see what he... And you and I know if he wants to overcut it just a little bit, too, you're going to get a little more angle yet. So let's see how he pockets the ball. See where he pocketed that's, the that's, ball? That's what he did. And he hasn't ended up with a shot, but he does have the three. You know, that's the shot he's ended up with. And he might have that one ball, too. No, I think that's off angle here. Is it that much? Yeah. Or, yeah, and well, he's got yeah the, shows it. He's got that angle on the three where he's on the 50-yard line. He doesn't have the angle to comfortably go across table and back again. And he doesn't have the angle to hold it real, real comfortably. So, therefore, he's, I look for him to hold it. Yeah, yeah I think so, too. Just a soft draw there. Yep. Well, he's run 27 now. I believe he started with 81. That gives him 108. He needs 42 more balls, if I'm correct with my mm -hmm. math. I don't know. You got it. He's got two or two, three ways. If he's actually got four ways here, he can shoot this 10 and stun it. He's got the 15. He's got the one he can go into him with. I mean, it's hard for him to make a mistake. He's looking at that eight combination, but I'd rather go into those balls and I'm open them up as to shoot that four and make the eight because you don't know what the rest of them are going to do. Mm -hmm. And if he goes into them off the one, he's got the seven ball as the insurance balls to come, mm -hmm. with, come away with the shot. So, therefore, it's more of a manageable situation for him. He didn't want to float that. He tried to stick it. Yeah, he, he kind of lost. He's already go seven. He's going to get on either one of them or the eleven. There again, you got three balls you can get on. No, would he be? Two uh, Would he though. consider going into him now? No, no. Well, you no because there's no protection and you can't really. He's going to. I don't like this as well. 
See, he got away with it because you, you, you can't get the cue ball out of there. With the one ball, you can follow through the balls or mm -hmm. you can draw through the balls. Yeah, it looks like he had a, a better situation going into him off the uh, off the one. But, of course, the way things worked out, I really can't argue mm -hmm. with his uh, his decision on the on going into him off the seven. Oh, it did? Now, once again, he looks like he's going to have to manufacture something, unless he intends on using the 14 as the break ball. Now, the 11 seems a little closer to the cushion than I would like. So, therefore, I don't know if I would accept that as the break ball, unless I was absolutely forced to use that as the break ball with the 8 ball as the lead-up ball, possibly. So, let's that's, see what he does. More of a, uh, that's more of a uh, safety contingency right now for him. Oh, he's going right after him, unless you're going to break him with the 6. That's yeah. what he's going to do. Yeah. Break him. He's going to leave that other, even though he don't not crazy about it. He, he knows that it's workable. I think he can make the nine here. Let's see if he does. The deuce is going. The one's going to go into the five, so he should have uh, plenty of. Uh, well, do you think he's going to hit it that hard? No. I don't think he's going to hit it. I think he's going to just. Well, it'll hit the one into the five. I think. I think he'll have to hit it hard enough for that, but he'll have control of things. Mm -hmm. Now the two come come out somewhat for for a possible break ball. Yeah, he may manufacture, but he's leaving it. Now I don't know why he's doing this though. Well, because he's going to use the one for the break ball. Really? Looks like he's going to use for the one for the break ball here. He wants that two to get off that rail so he can shoot the 11 past it. And now, look, okay, he may... No, well, he's going to use that, that He's going to use the 11. Uh, I, I'm, I'm surprised to see him do this. I'm really surprised to see him using the 11. I, I think that the one is a much better break shot, but, of course, he doesn't have much of a shot here because that two ball has certainly complicated the situation somewhat by ending up in the position that, it's, that it did. You know, he would like to shoot the 11 here, I think. Uh, the one I'd uh, have to hold up on here is I'd have to stay with the 11. Yeah, now he's going back to the 11 Because again. I'd hit this with a little... Uh, he's, he, if he shoots this 5, he may change and go with the 1. He may go deuce 8, 11, 1. Yeah, well, he saved the 11-8 the uh, because of this Because I don't think he has much reason. choice now, so yeah. now it's, it's, that's the right thing for him to do. He, he's really going about this a difficult way, I think. I think pretty hard for him to get off there either side of the rack though he wants on this side but it's pretty hard he should be able to get on one side or the other well here. if he's going to use the 11 he's going to have to go 218 because he can't expect to go 281 and get on the 11 no he's going to use the one Oh, he's going to use the one for a break oh, ball. Sure. Oh, yeah, right. That's what I thought he was going to use before, but, of course, in a different fashion that he ended up using. I like the one much better than the 11 because, naturally, the 11 is closer to that side cushion that I would like, and it's going to reduce the size of the pocket because you've got to have to hit it with a pretty firm stroke. And in doing that, you're going to reduce the size of that pocket. Therefore, he's opted to shoot the 11, playing position for the one, and use the one for the break ball. You know, he might have to stiff this to the side rail. I don't know if he can... No, he misses it nice. Okay, that's a good shot. Well, I'm going to tell you, that particular stroke that he used on that particular shot was a difficult one. You know, it's difficult to control the cue ball as nicely as he did on that type of a shot. Sometimes you, you hit it too, you know. You, you get too much follow You get too much follow sometimes. Sometimes you don't get enough, and he goes toward the pocket. So, therefore, what he did was actually execute. He executed, he executed ex perfectly. Yep. There was definitely nothing natural about uh, what he did there. I'm going to hit this one a little high right and go through the balls and off the rail a little bit here. Oh, my, he missed it. He just shot real fast. That's well, he not played, like Mike. He yeah, he really played cue ball once again. I think I'm going in the side pocket. That's what yeah. 
Yeah, he played cue ball, and, and you know he violated one of the rules that we know shouldn't be violated, and he took his eye off the object ball, and in doing that, he missed the one ball, and this really could end up costing him. I don't think that's going to happen, though, because I think unless this young man's got something we haven't seen, he uh, and, and not taking anything away from him, he just has to see how he hit that shot there, three cushion. Now there comes a time for that, but I don't think that was the appropriate time. I think you're supposed to come just straight across the table. You got the six to nine. He got in trouble now. Now he's looking at that nine. Holy moly, that's a tough shot. You're supposed to shoot that six. Yeah, he's going to shoot the six. Or the combination of the one. And uh, so he's got to get some control. The one, that shoot cue the one. Fly. one ball. Now this can be missed as well because it's, it's well, he, now he's going to shoot the four. Four like. to nine, but the four is a shot, I agree. You can see the four much better four than ball. the nine. Well, you rifled it. You're not going far with that there. And if you're going to do something, you got to like maybe drag that 11, come ball. back here for the 13 or the 3. And so you can start working in the back of these balls. He tried to do that, but he hasn't gotten the cue ball mm. back far enough. No. Nope. So he's, now he's going to have to shoot the 15. Yep. And not only is he going to have to shoot the 15, then he's going to have to go back up table for the 9-6. Mm, but he's got to be smart enough to start working the balls and not try to do too much at once. He might use some inside and come into the five, and I don't like that because... No, 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 he's supposed to shoot the 15 here. There's no reward if he, unless he gets way down here in the end rail. See, he's got to get here. If he, don't, he comes up short, he's got Five. another tough shot. He's, he's going to shoot to 15 anyway. Looks like he's going to shoot to 6 to me because he's, he, he, tried, he tried to stay away from the 15 last time. And in and, and doing what he did last time, there's no reason why he shouldn't shoot to 6 now. He's going to shoot it because he can shoot to 10 next. And he can get himself out of trouble here real gentle. Okay. You're right again. Six. Now, if he can he follow this down, hit the deuce into the seven, but just gently, and then you get the three ball. Just follow Ten down ball. to the end rail. Now, he's drawing it, though, so I don't know what's going to happen here. Uh, he got a shot, but now he can reach over that, shoot the three and the two, and maybe go up and bump the eight for a break with the 13 for protection. If you go the other way, you might get under the eight. On the seven, seven, eight, well, no, it's a little ball. bit too low, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's a little too low. Eight. Hmm. Interesting what you can do here. Oh, look at this. Ooh, no, he's did got he two great balls. Sweet. Oh, my, he sure did. Now his bad ball is that seven ball. He wants to get that seven ball out of there. Ten. Mm. Six ball. Well, the six ball wouldn't be a bad uh, key ball. No, it wouldn't. You know, because... Uh, Eleven. The five, you know. Well, he's he's going to make sure he saves them two to last, so he'll probably go seven, thirteen, and then he's going to make his choice. <laughs> I don't think I would do that, though, because, you know, you got to have some sort of an idea what you're going to do because you don't. there's no guarantee you're going to end up with a good angle. Well, he, he definitely made a decision what he was going to do. I would have made my choice because I wouldn't have taken a chance on traveling the cue ball, and I know I would be able to get on one of them. But now he's going to... Holy mackerel, then he's going to try to go two, two rails or draw on three rails and go three rails and get down at the bottom rail and go one rail to 13. That's what he's going to try to do, I think. No, I think he's lost his marker because he doesn't even have a shot in the 13 now. No, you don't even have a shot. You're correct. So, uh, you know, this is not going to get it. And if it does, I'm going to, I'd be surprised. No, I think I'd have to try to draw this to the side rail, drop it down over here somewhere to get a shot in that 13. 18. 
He can't do it any other way that I know of. It looks like he's going to roll it, and in doing that, he's going to come. Oh, he missed. He may have missed it. No. He's got to play safe. Mr. Schmidt's on a run of 14, shooting the 13 ball. Now let's get a score up here and see uh, exactly how this match stands. 120 balls for Siegel, 97 for John Schmidt. He had two break balls there. action on the adjacent table between Bobby Hunter and Alan Hopkins. I don't know how the balls ended up in the position they did, but there seems to be a bit of a discussion back there about something. Look at this ball. I was rolling toward that pocket. Got him. I don't know. If you look, or the seven got him. Seven's no, got him. I don't, yeah, it may. The seven may have him. See, here's where the, you got to walk around that rack and look. The one thing about straight pull is you're going to play a lot of straight pull. What the guys got to do on safeties and every time them balls are nudged, you should walk around that rack and look. He might make this on the side. If he could make this on the side and get a shot on the five, he can make the 15 and break him up. I've seen weirder things, but he. <laughs> yeah, but he really didn't accomplish anything in doing what he did there. No. You know, I mean, he's left Siegel too, too many options. He left him a shot, actually, but it might can play safe, but he did leave him a shot. Be careful, you're giving him a shot. You're giving him a free one up in the corner, and that's going to shoot it. <laughs> I'm telling you, on this, on this. Yeah, I agree. It's not bad. Uh, if you roll this ball and don't try to uh, hit it hard, you can, just, you can make this shot. <laughs> Looking at it, he's going for it. Uh, he's going for it, and I don't think he's going to roll it. Well, that's bad then. The selection is roll it. You got a chance to make it. You can't make it. My God, you see how good he hit that right in the center did. of the pocket. Thinking a little bit, clearing out that end rail, and I can go up for the 12 and the 8. And 6 probably goes to. He just kind of like throwing it into the wind, eh? <laughs> Holy yeah, he's certainly, uh, he's certainly going about it in an awkward fashion, but uh, well, you know, he's, he's going to bank the yeah, three. He's most certainly going to bank the three. I mean, that's, there's no question about that. He's going to have to hit it with a pretty good, with a pretty good touch too. 
because of the five, he might end up scratching here. Oh, well, he made the bank. He's got the combination. He's not even thinking about a break shot there. But <laughs> the seven ball is a good break shot. You know, you got to shoot the nine and go around the balls and work the balls. Or, mm -hmm. But he's going to play the combination. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's gonna Come play the down, hit the nine, I think. That's what he's. He thought about a little control there. And he's got a player in back of him, so he's going to have to wait. Now, here. I don't consider this taking a chance. Do you, Billy, to hit this with a little bit of center to, and then just kind of stroke? Hold it. I'll shoot the six and then hit the eight and bump the eight out, but he didn't. He went the other way. Nine. I don't know what the break shot is. I got an idea. It might be the nine, but I don't know. He may, uh, he may well, have thought, an angle here. Yeah, he may be able to touch it, bump that. Okay, very nice. All right. That's all right. He can cheat the pocket a little bit. This is where you just stun it a little bit below center, but stun it. Don't get too deep on it. Well, he didn't hit it. He hit it right on the nose. Yeah, he, he, didn't, he didn't cut hit it. the ball at all. And he didn't draw the ball. No. So therefore, he hit it with a stroke uh, that uh, I think he just miss hit the ball. You know, uh, he's certainly lost his market on the break. And uh, what possibly is going to hurt him a lot in winning this match because he had a great break shot in the 14. It looked like a really good opportunity. He's not going to get very many more opportunities. No, he's giving like away this. a lot of pretty good opportunities. And at this present time, the score is a 119. Now here's for where a Siegel. nice, powerful stroke comes 110 in. for Schmidt. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. There's a nice, powerful stroke. He lets us with a high uh, uh, right hand ball, and he can, if he smokes it, he can come down on the last two balls. See how he come down off those balls? And he's got himself a and nice shot on the 11. Boy, well. that's a hard shot. He, hit it, he executed it very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm curious if I, to see what he's going to do here because there's a chance that he may even try to break the balls off the 11 because he certainly hasn't showed the. <laughs> he showed a certain propensity or, for that type of stuff. Exactly. <laughs> you know, he's, uh, he's not really. That six might be good, but we can't tell from here, Billy, off the eight. 11 ball. Uh, six might be pretty good there. He's got the one possible. I don't know. 16. One ball. If it does, he can go right through it. He's nice. Oh, he drew it. Wow. 17. And, you know, he's flirting with danger. You know, he realized, you know, he's going to have the lead shortly in this match. It's 119 to 110 18. prior to this rack. So, therefore, he's... Uh, Looks like he's looking to get the lead here. Thirteen ball. Thinking about the seven ball here. Five ball. I'm gonna try to think a little bit like him. <laughs> he might be thinking about the seven or the twelve in the side. Four ball. You mean off the fourteen? Mm -hmm. The lead on to the twelve in the side? Correct. Yeah. Twenty-three. If he's gonna use the uh the, the nine, seven eight, ball. Six. If he's gonna use the uh, seven ball then then he could leave that uh, and maybe that the six eight. eight. Yeah. yeah, because the eighth position in the center of the table would be wouldn't be a difficult task for him to play the position for the seven off the eight. That would be a nice shot.
12 ball. Twenty-five. Yep, he's going to go eight six because he can't hold it on that six unless he. He's going to worry about the side even because he doesn't use a lot of English. Twenty-six. Six ball. Well, Billy, you got it exactly right. He held on for the eight. I don't know if it's good or bad. Well, I think he, he can pinch <laughs> that right there. He don't have to go nowhere with that. Yeah. At least it looks like it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't it look like, like much angle. It, it looks like that he could end up uh, by pinching it in a pretty good spot. He's going to go to the rail, though. I could tell by the way he was, went up to that center. Well, he's got a nice angle. Mr. Schmidt's on a run of 28, shooting a seven ball. Now he has how many? 138? No, he has um, uh, 28. Score is Mr. Schmidt, 124. 14, 24. 119 to 124 in favor of Schmidt. So therefore, this, this match is certainly tightened up and it looks like it's anybody's match from this point. And sure surprised me the way it turned around. Well, you know, it's, it surprised a lot of people, you know. I mean, who figured that a relatively unknown, or really an actually an unknown player that got here through a qualifier in Los Angeles is going to play possibly the best, the best bay pool player in the world, even though he's been relatively inactive. But still, nevertheless, it, who expected this to happen, you know? He's got a legit, legitimate chance to defeat uh, Siegel here. And, but this is, the, the, this is the most crucial time of the match right here. Right for here. Him. This is where the, all the pressures are going to start to mount 29. up. And can he handle it? Can he deal with it? That remains to be seen. But, of course, there's a lot of pressure out there for, for this young man right now. And, but, but this is where his style of play is really going to help him and aid him in, in winning this match because he doesn't have to think much. He attacks mm -hmm. instead of, you know, meticulously or deliberately playing the balls. He attacks, and that's good. Just like in there, he, he whacked it and wound up on the end rail. If that one didn't come down, he didn't have anything. He had the eight one in the ball. side. Oh, he bump 15, probably. And he, he displayed 31. some control there. And Four ball. 32. He had 24 before the rack. With this rack, will give him 38. And then all he needs is 12 more balls in the next rack. So therefore, you know, he's, uh, he's defi definitely in good position to win this match. He's got to be careful. This is when you got to be careful, though. Yeah, but why should he be careful and change his style? Right? It's not as much as change your style when I refer to being careful. I mean, I refer to being careful more that when you got the balls open. See what I mean? You got all them balls open. You work around them balls and get them balls off. I don't care if you got to get them off the wrong way. Well, I'll tell you what. You're right once again. But in the meantime, <laughs> Siegel makes another appearance, unexpected again, appearance yeah. at the table. And I don't think he's going to have another opportunity. No. He's going to have to make good with this one right and here. And I think he will. And I think he will because he's... He's uh, he's a veteran. He knows that himself. He knows well. This is it. It's either now or ever. Pressure does some strange things, doesn't it? Yes, it sure does. I mean, here you are in one of the most prestigious tournaments that we have in our game, with an opportunity to defeat who could possibly be the best great pool player in the last 30 to 40 years, and you snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Because these guys, or you snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. These guys here ain't playing for the money. Uh, those days are, our thinking is gone in that, the way things are right now. We're playing for the prestige of winning the U.S. Open, which is the greatest straight pool tournament that was ever devised in pool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always looked at it that way, so it's it's nice if you can get a little frosting, but <laughs> we'll have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now he has the, the 15 ball as a, po a possible break ball. He has the five ball as a possible break ball. He started the rack with 119 uh, balls. Now see what Mike is smart enough to do here, though. I'm not necessarily saying it's the right thing to do, but I think it's kind of a smart thing to do. He He's not going to do that. He's not going to shoot the 15, but he could have shot the 15, then shot the six, then came down and got the two and the 12, you know, worked that way. 
but he's still got enough balls there, recovery balls that he he didn't do it. But he thought about it for a second. Mm -hmm. Now, so he will get this rack off, no matter how it, what it takes to get it off. To, even if he doesn't get into the next rack, where the younger player should have been thinking that way at this point of the of the game. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that's very well put. Now the six ball becomes a thorn in the side right here because he's gonna have to eliminate that ball. It's, in a, it's laying in a bad position. And see the five blocks the pocket and the 15 blocks the pocket for the six. He may run into it right here, let's see. No, he didn't. Now watch out, he's, watch losing, out. he's losing the cue ball here. Yeah. Okay. Five. Almost losing the cue ball. I don't think I like going 813, to tell you the truth. He might do that, but I don't like it. That's what he's looking at. Well, he it looks probably like he, has to. He's going to go 813. He's going to go 813. You're right. 81326. Eight, maybe 813526 or 813256. Yeah. Six. T. Billy, you're getting to know this straight pull too good. I don't know what we're well, going to do with you. You're working now, pal. Forget <laughs> about it. <laughs> Ooh. Seven. Okay, now, Isn't that wonderful, players, that everybody gets to go, ooh, ah. <laughs> this is a, really a crucial shot right here. He's going to draw it back far enough for the I five. I don't think he will. I think he'll kill it for the six. I don't think he'll take any chances. Okay, that's what that's he's done. Because yeah. he can break off that five, too. He knows mm -hmm. that. He's going forward here. He'll come off the rail, take a choice. That's what he's going to do. Well, he's, no, he's really, going to go with the five. Yeah, he's really lost his market on the on on the uh, on the 15 ball break shot. Cause the, no, he still might go with the well, five. I don't like the angle that he has. He'll he'll go two rails with the five. Well, yeah, he's undecided. You know, I, I'd really give this a lot more thought now. I know, <laughs> and the five ain't a bad ball upstairs either. It's a nice ball at the top. Looks like of the he's right. on the 50 yard line for either shot. Watch out. He's fine. He's all right. Ten. You know, every every rotation puts him further down right. the table and off angle more than he wants to be. And now he's ended up with an awkward angle on the five. I don't like this shot, and especially at this stage of the game. What do you think? He'll, he'll pop it right in. <laughs> oh, my. I tell you what, you can't ask for a closer match. Really exciting because both of these players have been overly generous during this match, and uh, it's gotten down to it's 129 to 128, and a lot of suspense out there. You know, what's going to happen? Overly generous. I like <laughs> that one. Now, here's the same stroke. He's going to get that center low, and he's going to rifle it. This is something, uh, this is a shot I wouldn't want to shoot, really. That's one of my favorites. He Boy. Got, he got the one ball. He really hit that well. Or he's got the 11. You know, and all of a sudden, for the first time in the match, I think he can feel that he can really win this match. You know, he can, <laughs> look, look, he can feel he can really win this match. If he can make that one, which I think he can, he can go into the six. At going into the match, obviously, he had that confident feeling. But, you know, a quarter way into the match, he started to lose it. And then halfway into the match, he didn't realize whether or not he could win or not. And not only until now, I think, is he, that he had, does he have that feeling again. Really, really undecided on what to do. We would like to see him win this match. That's because we don't like Smith. But we want to see Siegel go on, and, you know, because he brings us a lot of entertainment. Well, it's not that we don't like him. <laughs> we don't know him. <laughs> oh, my. Well, he's going to have to shoot the combination. Yep, on the nine, Mr. So sure. Therefore, the suspense is definitely still there. Let's uh, find out what happens. Do you think there's any adrenaline out there right now? I mean, is it, is it, is, is it flowing? Now, is he going to follow this softly <laughs> and shoot play the four over here, or is he going to draw a little bit? This is, a, see, the thing about hitting these here, if you hit them soft, you're going to make them all. But if you hit them very hard, you better hit them clean. Yeah, clean. But I, I think he would like to get back for the eight. Yeah, I, well, I agree. He is going to have to come back for the eight. Oh, my. See that? Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh -oh. What did, well, see, you know, that was unexpected. And now... 12 in the side. Looks like he's going to have to revise his game plan somewhat here. Let's see how that 12 laying in the side. Uh -oh. And now he's got to do something he didn't want to do. 
But of course, uh, he's, he's no, he, can he bank the one? I don't think he has enough room to bank the one. I don't think he can hit enough of the one to bank it cross corner. And he's ended up in a really awkward position. And what about the 12 in the corner down there? Unfortunately, uh, there's something down in that corner over there off the deuce, ain't there? The 12 ball. He's looking to play the 4 8 combination. Now, this is the type of a shot that he would pocket with regularity five years ago, but today, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where the four was going. I knew where it was going when you drew it. Notice the last time he took so much time, he was really undecided whether to play that combination 7-12, and he missed it by a half a diamond. Once again, you know, he's really undecided on what to do, and he's forcing himself to shoot this shot. I don't know. This is a very difficult shot, especially. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, we have the ball. Oh, my. Oh. Well, that was really. Did he break his stick? That was really, a, yeah, you know. Uh, Did he broke his stick? I don't know if he fell on it in the pressure of the weight that he uh, broke it, or else he just. You know, he's really beside himself right now. It so. was accidental. It was accidental. He he kind of went like he was going to butt it, and then what happened, he well, went to hold it, hold it, and he I think his weight fell against the joint, and it broke off at the joint. He well, didn't break his make, cue, it make, broke his shaft. What to make matters worse is, is the stick that he made. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the score and exactly what the score is and... Uh, what chances Siegel has of making another appearance, if uh, if it's possible? What is the score of the match right now? Okay. We'll get it up there on the monitor. No, I believe that was an accident there, folks. Okay, Siegel has 132 balls. He needs 18. John Schmidt needs 22 balls. And even though he only needs 22 balls, there are 22 difficult balls at this stage of the match. Well, what you, you have think? 14 and you got 20. There's 24 balls if you take this in the next rack. So you. Uh, yeah, he's on a foul. He needs nine this rack. Okay. And he needs the entire rack. No, no, he doesn't. He, he needs, needs nine this rack, rack. He needs 13 in the next rack. Yeah. And now we respotted a ball. I respotted two balls. Oh, two balls going on on that? Hmm. So I don't think that that makes his job any easier because no. there's, there's more congestion out there. So look, there's three, six, ten, twelve balls left on the table, which he can get 13. I mean, uh, 11 of them. Three, six, nine. He can get 11. That'll put him at uh, 139. And then he'll need 11 balls in the next rack if he's able to get that far. So we're looking at this rack and 11 in the next rack. 22 22 balls. Well, we'll we'll talk. What do you want to do, Billy? Uh, you you want to talk a little bit? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I think he's probably the kid. Probably young man. Probably took a. Took a break, well, didn't he, Pat? Uh, well, since Siegel opted to take his break earlier in the match, how many breaks did they get? One each? There's no yeah, limit? I don't think there is, no. I, I don't know what kind of rule that is. I mean, there's no limit. You can take as many breaks as you want. Well, it's not really to our advantage taking a lot of breaks, but it, I think that if somebody that was to abuse it, they would really change that rule right away. But I, so far, I haven't seen any abuse in, the, in the, what, what they're doing. Well, that's, that's true, but uh, I, I'd be surprised if Schmidt took the break because he's the one that's eager to play. He's the one that's on the attack all the time, so therefore the player that I felt that took the break was Siegel. Well, no, it was, well that could be because he might come back now, but the kid might have, uh, I keep referring to him that because I wish I was his age. But he probably, uh, uh, after Mike had his little accident, he probably wanted to regain his composure and didn't make sure that that affected him in any way. So. Okay, now that we've seen Schmidt play for the most part of the match, you know, 120 smart balls, what's your prediction? Do you think that he'll run out here and win this match? 
I think that he, there's a good possibility because he now looks like he's starting to fall into stroke a little bit and he's starting to think also along with it. I mean, he's not as quite as wild as he was earlier in the match. I think he's settling down and thinking a little bit more about where he's going and what he's doing. So you just like... Well, my, my, my opinion is but that... But the balls are laying tough. My, my opinion... Well, don't, don't try to... Back out of this, now, okay? I mean, you already made your decision on it. So okay. Please. I mean, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to be any less of a player if he doesn't run out. You'll always be a great player. Okay. Yeah. But my opinion is that he doesn't get out because there's a lot of pressure out there, and and, and for a haphazard player, this type of a match. Yeah, but is you difficult. cheated a little bit, Billy. You kind of took the balls when they're laying rather tough, old boy, to, to come up with that. <laughs> what, you want to reconsider? No, no, no. I'll stick. I'll stick with. Three. See, now I can make the three and open them up and just hit it with a little. See, now this is where he doesn't know. He can hit this with a high ball with a, like a high right. Three go ball. through the balls, come off, and have the six. But it draws fine, too. This is okay. Just don't try to do much with it. See there? You got the six, and you open the balls up nice. But you don't want to leave that six. You want to un uncover that ten. And if you want to, and then come out in front for the two and the twelve and things like that, and maybe, maybe even the H bid. Six ball. So you come out nice. He's got the two, and now he can bump the four, and he can shoot the fourteen and the four. I can't tell his angle. It looks like his angle. He you know might what, not want to do that. He you know might what just he follow it down a little bit. You know bit. what he may have in mind? He may have in mind that he wants to attain an angle on the two to draw back into the eight, to move that eight away from that uh, that side a little two bit. Ball. He didn't have the angle, and I was surprised to see him shoot that shot. I don't know. Well, the, the, the ten ball is a... I don't like taking break this shot. one out first. This one's, uh, if you take the 12 out and then you shoot the 7, at least you can come down under the 8 and have the 4. But if you go the other way, you don't have to like it. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's, it's much more manageable by taking the 12 off the that's, table first. That, that's the word manageable. Perfect. Nice angle and everything. Even if he bumps 14, it ain't going nowhere. You know, can he can he shoot the 7 and then come down the table for the 4 sure. in the lower right-hand corner and draw the ball into the 8? It looks like he's trying to hit this hard. If he does, oh, my gosh. That was a terrible Yeah, thing see, to do. he's going to do something eventually that's going to cost him, and that was you know, that was one of those times but where look he what could happened, have. Though. Look what happened. He can come under that 10, shoot the 4, and the else he can stay above the 10, go 10-4. Ten, yeah. He might want to shoot the 14 4 and bump the 8. You know, that may be something he has in mind. Mm, now, he may have an angle to bump the 8 here. It's out. Ain't he down? Yeah, but it's out, not out really that, that far. You know, he may want to push it a little further away from that side. That 10 looks a little tough to be doing that. I understand, but you never can tell. Pressure does a lot of uh, uh, weird stuff, you know. Let's see what he's ended up with. It. Oh, he's going to use the 10. See, eight now the, eight, the 8 wasn't out far enough. But that's what I'm talking about, that composure. He used a little composure. Even though he kind of chop-chopped on that rack, he got them balls off there. Okay, this is now probably the biggest shot that he has shot in his young career. Life. Yes, yeah. right here. You know, and, and undoubtedly, this probably is the biggest shot that this young man has ever shot. Because what could have been, what could be a bigger shot than this? He has a chance to advance in, in the world's U.S. Open straight pool tournament. He has a chance to defeat one of the greatest straight pool players in our time. And this shot is a crucial shot in this particular match. You know. well, well, I'll bet you one thing, Will, Billy. Uh, he will not be hitting this softly. <laughs> you're, you're absolutely right. He will rifle this ball. There's a lot of pressure out there. Let's see how he responds to it. I was wrong. I said he would rifle it. He stroked that nice. Right now, he needs 11 balls. 
Therefore, he needs to run every ball on the table except the last four. Uh-oh, left-handed. Checking the rack, which is a good thing to do, making mm -hmm. sure that uh, if there's anything dead, maybe that he can uh -oh. do. Hit it nice. He's playing nice and loose, ain't he? Now he will open up some balls with this shot. Well, the two's going to hit the one into the six. He ain't going to do a lot of damage. He's going to draw the ball back. I didn't think he was going to do a lot of damage, but he's okay. Now he can work. Now he can go around the ball, shoot the eight, then come up. Uh oh, oh, he's going to break a mirror. I don't know about that. Well, he has the the uh, the 11 for an insurance ball if he has the angle to open him up from here. That's true. 15. You had to get straight on that, though. You don't want to hit that nine because you're going to come right underneath the balls if you do that. You want to shoot the six now and come, come off the rail and get straight on the eight and then shoot the eight. He, he don't have to like this unless he goes into the end rail and comes around. Let's see. See that like this? That's exactly what I thought he'd do, but he... he well, he's, he's showing us that he's not happy with the result. Now, but here, you just hit this soft with a high ball. Because you got the one, you know what's going to happen. He can draw back here and scratch off that seven. Or wind up with nothing. Look, at he got lucky. Oh, he had the four. Okay, he's all right. I don't mean to sound pessimistic. I just... <laughs> Scared me to where that cue ball's going. Now I can draw back and get the 14. Well, why not shoot the one? That's what I mean. Yes, that's yeah, why I say draw it, back it, off the one. I think he was looking to shoot the 14, but why not shoot the one? He only needs four balls. That's one of them. 19. He needs three balls. 14 ball. That's two. He needs two balls. That's nine it. Ball. He's got the nine. He's got the seven on the side. He needs one ball. This is it. Well, I did it, Billy. I, my strategy paid off once again. <laughs> I'll tell you. You got to give him credit, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh, this was a definitely a, a lot of pressure out there, you know, for anyone, <laughs> let alone, you know, a really unexperienced player like John Schmidt. He came through when he needed to at the end. So, therefore, you really have to take your hat off to that. Well, it's been since 93 since Mike's been. He, I mean, he played some and he won the tournament, like you said, in France, but. It's not the same as the U.S. Open, and, and he knows that. And, and he needs to get a few games under his belt to feel comfortable. He just never got comfortable in that whole game. Just no, he didn't. never got comfortable. He never got comfortable, and you, know, you hit the nail right on the head. He just never got comfortable. And I know and that feeling, and I hate it. <laughs> you need, he needed that, uh, that particular match. He needed that match really badly because I think that was a hurdle that he needed to get across in order to, uh, you know, to regain the confidence that he, that he once had. And I'm certainly sure he came into this tournament with a lot of confidence, but he certainly didn't display it here, you know, in this particular match. And he really needed this, this match badly. One, 1,000? He, he wants 10,000 for this tape. He wants to burn it. There you go. There you go, Pat. You made some pretty good ones on that one. <laughs> you realize that if he gives us 10000 for the tape, you're entitled to 25%. That's okay. <laughs> you hear that, Pat? I'm ready. I'm in. <laughs> good, he says. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Is John Schmidt going to come up? Uh, he's not? Well, okay. Then we have two minutes to talk about something uh, other than Mike. Well... Just go ahead and be your charming self. <laughs> well, what, what, I, what I would like to say is that John Schmidt came into this match really an underdog. Uh, but the, but in, the way he played, his style of play, really gave him a chance to win because he likes to attack the balls. He, you know, he, 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 he's not a bashful player. He goes and he attacks the balls. There's a lot to be said about a player who thinks offensively. Naturally, he's, he has a lot of uh, learning to do. 
and that'll come in time. But if I if, if I have a choice to play a player that's you know that's a timid or a player that that attacks, I would much rather play a timid player. And it was proven once again that if you if you attack the balls, you really have a chance to defeat anyone. And John Schmidt did. He defeated Mike Siegel. I've with seen a players uh, use something like this as a springboard to catapult them over the edge and really get going. So you hit it right on the head as. Uh, Billy, about the way that he's uh, he's aggressive and stroking the ball, and and whether he did things the way other people would have done them or not, it uh, he got comfortable in doing it that way until he got loose. I noticed his game changed midway, so uh, this kid could be a factor in the, in the future. Yeah, he could be very well could be because he has the he has the ability to play well once he gets the experience, mm -hmm. you know. So anyways, we're going to close up now. So on behalf of my friend Dallas West, it's been a pleasure, Dallas. Yeah, I really enjoyed being here with you, Billy. It's uh, been a regular treat. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. So once again, on behalf of Dallas, this is Bill and Cadona saying thanks a lot for supporting Accustats. Give Pat a call, 1-800-828-0397.